What is going on, everybody? It is episode 589 of Pop Culture Crisis. My name is Brett, and I am here once again on this Friday afternoon with my co-host. Would you introduce yourself, please? Hi, Crisis Actors. It's Mary. Happy Friday. As usual, we have a special guest joining us in the studio. It's G Prime 85. Hi. <laughs> George Alexopoulos. Yes. He has a name, yes. but... Uh, it's well, sort of like calling Alex Stein prime time 99. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, uh, so I know because I was, I was, when you were on, you were in IRL and it had, he had you as G prime. I think you just didn't want to type out the whole name. You know, as Greek names go, mine's very easy. <laughs> People call me Alex sometimes, but you know, call Yenopolis me whatever you want. is harder to spell than Opolis? Alexopolis. Yeah. Yiannopoulos. Yiannopoulos. Yeah. 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 Papadopoulos. There's Who's the other George? He was, just, he was just here, too, George Papadopoulos. Really? <laughs> I think he was just here. What was the oh, other? Oh, it would have been so iconic if they were here at the same time. Yeah, it's like the Greekest day ever. Yeah. It's like Furbies. We'll yeah. talk to each other in our secret language. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot most of my Greek anyway, but it, oh. it's funny. Yeah, I'd like to hear if they uh, speak it still. Yeah. And uh, so I was talking to, to Mary off air before we started. I said, like, you were here the very early days of Timcast, like very <laughs> early, when that show when Tim Guest IRL was still up here in the studio. Well, I had been listening to Tim for years before that, but I guess when the official show started and they had guests, I don't know who, I must have contacted him or something. But yeah, it was uh, you know, a huge honor to be invited and stuff. I'm not like a professional. I've never considered myself one. So I'm not just like, am I. yeah, I came, I came here and was like, oh, I'm going to just hang out with some cool people. And uh, I keep getting invited back by some miracle and it's so cool to see everybody. And that's uh, and that's different because like we were we were talking about it before because IRL is mostly people talking politics, but you would say that that's not your first interest. It's actually you fell into that in in art and culture yeah. and these things. That's actually what interests you far more. Yeah, I mean, I've been drawing comics for I don't know twenty years or something. My debut was in two thousand five ish, no six, mm. and uh, yeah. So I've been trying to make graphic novels, video games, comics, and it's only I think it was around twenty seventeen when I started doing political strips just as a sort of uh, long story, I got kicked off of Reddit, blah, blah, blah. I had to rebuild my entire uh, identity on Twitter at that time. And uh, yeah, I'm posting just whatever people would respond to. And for some reason, uh, my political strips did really well. And some I, of them are hanging in the IRL studio. That was, yeah. yeah, I was just about to point out, like, I forgot, like, there's like two or three, I think, that are both hanging up in there yeah. in mm -hmm. the IRL studio. It was, yeah, it was a total accident. Uh, I didn't even mean for those strips to, like, I, I never tried when I paint those. Like, I never try. I don't care about them so much art-wise. Yeah. But it's, the fun, it's a funny irony of life. Just you have to recognize when people say, this is what we want you to do. And then I did a little career shift. That's what opened the most doors, but uh, we could maybe mention it later. But like, I still do graphic novels. That's my main job. Well, we're gonna be. I, I do yeah, want yeah. people to see that you've got. Uh, I don't mean to be like yeah. that plugging type of person, but no, like, yeah, just to explain. Like, I am an actual artist slash illustrator, illustrator primarily, I guess. Yeah, it's um, uh, all it's the a links are in the description for you guys who want to follow or look yep. at. Your, short, your store, your wife's store, yes. we also have that in there. I'm personally very happy with uh, the thumbnail for today with you uh, looking yeah. up uh, at the... Which one <laughs> is the real me? Yes. You know, <laughs> it's hard to... Was that your eclipse gear? That is that is my eclipse gear. Did I, it work? I don't. I can't see you, but <laughs> okay. I did stare directly into the sun, Mary. It was amazing. Uh -huh. I'm, <laughs> I'm not looking at Mary when I say that. That's it was real. a Trump moment. Yeah, we so were... face masks, I, I solar distanced. It was very important to uh, not be too close to the sun when I did that. I saw this really interesting thing on Twitter the other day where they said like they uh, they redid the floors at this one office where like they used to have the, the six feet like the foot, like the outlines the of feet, and said so now yeah. it looks like somebody was just beamed up to the sky because it's like <laughs> faded, but it's still there. Well, no one had the nerve to take the stickers off yeah. the floor, no. and you know, I was usually that person. By the way, we missed a. $28 from Canada from Kyle Dixon. He said, have a great weekend, PCC. Sorry, we missed that for a sec there. Thank you, Kyle. Thank yeah, you, that Kyle. actually came in before the show, and it's, it's from Canada, so it's a more polite form of currency. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. The, sorry that we missed that. Sorry. Not so what were you what? saying? Oh, I was going to say those foot... Uh, outlines are like it's a terrible very dark joke but like you know how like hiroshima there were the shadow people and stuff yeah it's horrible this I, is where people social distanced i think terrible that's joke. actually what the the tweet described it as it's like shadow feet horrible. Uh, and that was actually how they were making the comparison there so yeah, yeah that's yeah, there uh, are some stores where i live man I, not even uh, i was at some convenience store on the way down here they still had the plastic thing over the mm -hmm. cash registers and then you would lean over to the side to give the money to the guy 
Because like, it just becomes too much effort to take the plexiglass down at some point. I don't know. Well, There's no, still it, maskers where I live. What it is yeah. is like, okay, so like corporate put them up, right? But corporate forgets that they're there or they just dismiss it and don't care anymore. And the guy who works there doesn't know if he has the authority. <laughs> so it's like the smoke alarm down. meme. Yeah, yeah. It's it's exactly you hear that beeping and it's like, can someone change the battery for God's sakes? Right. I don't know. I don't know if that's, that's my purview. I did see, however, one the other day that was pointing out, they said... Um, I think uh, five times August point is like when people put like the little sheet of rubber over the numbers on the credit card things. I said those were there before COVID because it was easier to clean because you can't like spray down a, a credit card machine because if the if the if the liquid gets inside the buttons, it will actually destroy it. So that wasn't actually a COVID <laughs> thing. But those yeah. got so filthy. They yes. still are. Yeah. 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 yeah good times just so, replace it well now isn't wait isn't there another like bird flu or something going on now that they're talking about that's going to be a problem there is i thought i was thinking that last night i was like i felt bad for ordering that uh, barbecue chicken yeah i was like is that why he didn't eat the chicken because it was like bird flu chicken no am i just I, don't eat i just uh, don't eat barbecue chicken i'm, I'm eating like my fifth slice this morning i'm like wait am i gonna get bird flu now <laughs> but uh, I imagine that here in, in this area, they only source the, the most healthy chicken. Yeah. I think West Virginia was like the last state in the country to get a COVID case. Was it? Yeah. Back I mean, in well, there's only like two people in West yeah, Virginia. Anyway. That's why we're all spread apart. <laughs> or there was more of them and they just didn't report it because they didn't care. No. Or yeah, exactly. They didn't care because they're not. Uh, I won't say that word in I the mean, first five minutes. Did you guys catch it ever? Uh, I got, so right when it started, I got very, very sick for about a week and a half, but I never went to the doctor. Same. I just, uh, yeah. Like I got I just, sick very, like twice, real bad. Like I thought, like, I'm just going to stay in bed for like two days straight and then I felt fine. I got, um, so I had like a, a story post, like, you know, when like your Instagram or your, I don't have a Facebook anymore. Like it gives you like the memory posts. Like you posted this on this day. It's fun memory. Yeah. And I had a story <laughs> post that said like. Um, it was like I went from Wu Tang to Wuhan in no time, and it was like two weeks after the after COVID great. started. I don't know if that was actually COVID, but it was like the worst yeah. I'd ever felt. But then yeah. after that, I was fine. I got like a cold with a fever after CPAC in 2020, mm. and I that heard that was one of the super CPAC. spreader events at the Shabbat dinner in CPAC 2020. And everyone... so maybe it was that, but I didn't get tested. That's for sure. It could have just been from going to CPAC. <laughs> could have been the uh, CPAC. You, you flu. caught conservatism. Yeah. Uh, yeah I I caught the gayness. There's a twenty dollar <laughs> one there from Corey Anderson. Um, uh, I don't see it here. It says good afternoon to Mary. Mary is the best, greatest of Ma greatest of all Marys ever, the goat, if you will. All Thanks. Marys are named after Queen Mary, dictator for life, even uh, even before she was born. Mary is the loveliest of all, and we have Brett too. Wow. Thank you, Corey Anderson. <laughs> I uh, I appreciate you fitting me in there at the end. I, I, I was a, that's nice. Shout out, Brett. <laughs> yeah. It's, I mean, that is a, a pretty big inside joke in the show. Like, they'll give, like, two people, like, the big hurrah, and then yeah. they'll just add the third person at the end to say, oh, we don't forget about you. Uh, guys, before we get started, would you hit the like button on this video ah. and subscribe to this channel? He's just getting his... Uh, that's what happens. Uh, that's what happens anytime a super chat comes through. You get money shot at you. It's yours You're to keep, keep my, in my bra there. Uh, oh, we forgot to get you to sign one. We're going to do that. Yes. Uh, don't let me forget. I won't let you uh, forget. Set a, set a hundred a, a, I'll get one. apart right now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> guys, hit the like button on this video. Subscribe to this channel if you have not done so already please and thank you share this live stream and these videos with your friends so that more people can come in here hang out watch these episodes and hopefully share them with their friends it's always the way we want to do things also remember that all super chats twenty dollars and over we will interrupt the discussion and we will read those super chats right then and there as you just saw so what are we going to talk about today we got a bunch of stuff to get into in the intro segments but the big things here is that disney is kind of coming out swinging against gina carano as they're filing to have her lawsuit dismissed so we're going to get into that uh I, I, there's just a weird discussion about legality versus morality that i think is really really interesting because we kind of got in the weeds when we were discussing it about uh right to work all these types of things that have to do with the law and then i'm like that's not really our purview because we're mm -hmm. not lawyers it's more about was it right to right. do it. So we're going to talk about that. We're also going to talk about J.K. Rowling, who is in the news again, because she is still doing what she always does, which is sit by a roaring fire with a glass of wine, <laughs> tweeting about trans, trans issues. That's what I imagine. So when I imagine J.K. Rowling tweeting, mm -hmm. I imagine her sitting like on like a $10,000 rug 
in like this huge mansion with vaulted a bear ceilings. Bearskin. Bearskin rug uh-huh. with like just the biggest fireplace you've ever seen. As she just with her tweets. Scottish husband. Yeah. <laughs> um, but she's talking about how an apology from the from her, the stars of the film is something that she doesn't think she could accept because of everything that's going on within um, the trans movement and how they have responded to it. So we're going to get into that. We're going to talk to you about video games. We're going to talk about art. We got all this other stuff. So if you guys are ready, we will just go ahead and get started. Mary, are you ready? Yes, let's go. You ready? My body is ready. Okay. Let's go ahead and do it. But is your soul ready? (laughs) Is your soul ready for Rihanna Smurf? Rihanna as Smurfette. As Smurfette, yes. Specifically Smurfette. She's voicing Smurfette and creating original movie or er, music for the new Smurfs movie. This isn't the first Smurfs movie, though. No, there the first been... one was in 2017. The, I thought it was before. That. Well, the first CGI one yes. made for like box office success was in 2017. Smurfs: The Lost Village, and in that one, Demi Lovato was Smurfette. So okay. they've officially race swapped. Smurfette. They're going to give her a darker shade of blue, obviously, mm-hmm. and she's going to have the Smurf pass. <laughs> Are they going to change her hair? Yeah, they might. They might give Smurfette give cornrows. Some, yes. Yeah, that all oh, that would be freaking. I, I say just lean into it. a Rasta beanie. Just do it. And, and, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I looked into this because I know there's been some discourse about how the character of Smurfette is actually a sexist stereotype. Like Lola Bunny. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Look at the objectification. So Smurfette has a sexist backstory in which she is not a real Smurf. She was molded from clay by the wicked wizard Gargamel. He created her to lure in the Smurfs for the use of his spells. And the only female character was created for evil. So that's... Wait. That is sexist. Aren't there like, <laughs> are, aren't there stories? Pre- oh, maybe you can tell me. Aren't there stories about Greek gods being molded from fire and clay? There is a Greek myth of in which a, what's his name? He makes a statue of a woman and loves it so much, and he prays that it becomes a real woman. Okay. So that was the first. The first incel. The first incel. Uh, I feel I like some that's of the this story's was used name. for like, like wasn't some of that like mythology, maybe not that one specifically. Well, that's an Adam and Eve-ish one, situation. But used for like the Wonder Woman mythology for some of that stuff. Well, she's supposed to be yeah. Greek. Yeah. So, Adam and Eve were molded from clay. There you go. So Smurf. Well, so, Eve came from Adam, right? Yes. Yeah. Adam. Uh, well, from... actually, if you think about it, then Adam is the ah, first ah, incel. Yeah. It's aimed right at me. No, here, here's the, here's the thing. I love it. Uh, people who've been on before oh, said the money, money guns are like losing because we've had them for so long. Yes. The money guns are losing their punch, but that one got you. Pop okay. Culture Junkie said, in my continuing quest to learn all of the quirks of your channel, what is the deal with Let's Go? Um, the that's... Let's Go with question marks? Yes. Uh, we made a joke. We? It was you, right? Okay, I, it was made, you. <laughs> I made a joke about Anne's Frank's hot dogs, and I, and I, I was about, I say let's go all the time, but it didn't feel whether maybe a hearty let's go is what you say after an Anne Frank yeah. joke. So I said let's go. Yeah, that's, and Frank. And then uh, we made it into merch. And the funny thing is, that's already been a skit. Somebody sent me that recently. There's already like an actual Anne's Frank's hot dog skit online. So they're I, kosher. I guess. Obviously. Like, uh, I don't know if they got that from us or if it's just a coincidence, but somebody sent that to me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How could recently. she make hot dogs if she couldn't see or hear or that's speak, tr- right? That's true. Also, I've been... Uh, <laughs> Helen Keller. Right. No, that's... Uh, I saw, like, a, a meme the other day that said, like, of a car that had stickers that said Helen Keller wasn't real yeah. on the back of it. That's one of the favorite Gen Z conspiracy that's theories. That she was fake. Mm-hmm. I believe that. Helen Keller was fake news. Yeah. This episode's getting demonetized. <laughs> we're gonna get context notes. We get context notes for anything Illuminati. And well, anything now we're now since you change. mentioned Illuminati and climate change, we're gonna get both. Okay, I'll just throw out the next one: abortion. Yes. They're gonna go one right under the other. Oh, conversion therapy. Notes. We just said all of the buzzwords to Perfect. get all okay. the context. We got it out of the way. So Rihanna's doing this. I, I I have no interest. I would rather see, like, they're doing the Garfield movie that comes out this year, which I'm actually kind of oh, yeah. looks cute, right? Yeah. Looks sweet. But I would rather they just went back to Alvin and the Chipmunks. The, yeah, I, I was, you know, the target demo for the Alvin and the Chipmunks yeah. movie. <laughs> I liked it. <laughs> of course you did. But who was the guy who played their sinister manager? Oh, I don't know. It's, uh, I mean, how, how long has it been since that? It's the same guy that played Matt, I, I just remember UK Matthew Gray Goobler was in that movie, and Matthew Gray Goobler okay. is a good actor. So. <laughs> I hear uh, Oprah is going to be Garfield. Oh, 
Oh yeah. Speaking of Rihanna. I just and uh, Chris Pratt playing Garfield, and I just went through like another like I go through the most random. I never go through the Twitter threads that actually help my job, mm -hmm. like the ones where you could read all the info on. Like there's all sorts of Twitter threads going on about Gina Carano right now. Right? That's not what I go through. I go through this one where they're talking about Chris Pratt losing weight is why he isn't funny anymore. Uh, they're like, he found God and lost weight, which is why he was only funny um, back okay. in the day. <laughs> well, you know, you were talking about um, Wonder Woman before. I've always said Carano should be the next Wonder Woman. She has always had the exact like attitude mm. and physique. She radiates feminine energy. Yeah. And like, that is Wonder Woman, not the skinny lady. I was looking at, uh, so we were making, we make our thumbnails beforehand, right? Yeah. And I took this, we took this still from The Mandalorian. And I think it's, it's great. Like they, she has the long hair. She still looks feminine and, and yeah. pretty, but she's also very like. It makes sense for her to be like jacked yeah. and fight guys. I would believe that. Yeah. There's a, I mean, there's some other female actresses. Who's the, who's the one from, um, oh, I'm going to, she was on, somebody in the chat helped me. This is one of those days where I, I kind of take points off for myself when I can't remember. Katie Sackhoff, that's her name. Uh, I think Katie Sackhoff, I don't know if she necessarily has that same level of physical beauty or of, uh, uh, in her face, but she's uh, got a good physique. She's got a good size. I think she could have been good at that, but. Let me see. She's in. Uh, MMA? No, no, Katie Sackhoff. She was in Longmire. She was in uh, Star. She's in like the new Star Wars. She looks skinny. She's not that skinny. She's actually she's actually pretty pretty built. Oh, this lady. Mm. Nah, Gina would beat her up easily. <laughs> oh, so he says Katie got old. It is true. Katie Sackhoff's older now, so it wouldn't really work. So, uh, but liked her a lot. They said they weren't gonna recast Cara Dune, right? No. They didn't say that. No, they said that. I, I just think that they're just gonna let the character go. Okay. If anything, that's like that becomes the Streisand effect if you bring it back up. Right. Like just leave it, leave it be. Right. So. All right. Uh, so I just say don't I, make Smurf. It's not for us. Who cares? Yeah. We'll wait and see. I want cornrows though. There we go. <laughs> we want Ross to Smurf it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, I want to mention this because look, first notices of like movies in development are always dicey, but this is a very interesting one given the success of Mutant Mayhem last year, which mm -hmm. was for kids. This is the announcement that they are in fact making an R-rated Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles: The Last Ronin adaptation. If you don't know live what the last action. yes live action adaptation, if you don't know what the last Ronin is, it was a proof of it was like a concept strip from like. Back in the day that they finally made into a comic in like 2020 in which it takes place in the future and three of the four turtles and, Sh and Splinter are dead and one ch turtle is left to try and save New York City and save humanity from uh, Shredder's son and, and elsewhere. So it's really, really a fantastic concept and would lend itself really, really well to a good live action adaptation if they allowed it to be as dark as it could. But just like I said, with The Crow and with Blade, I don't think that those reboots will ever capture the magic of that kind of feel of those 80s and 90s properties, right? So I said, shoot it on film, get Jim Henson's Creature Shop, and allow it to be dirty, allow it to have uh, a certain look of um, dinge that I just don't think that they would do for a Turtles movie now. No. I think it would look too polished. Correct. Yeah. Well, you need this says Tyler Burton Smith, who co-wrote Boy Kills World, is mm. going to write the script for this. I I left that out because like this early on, they a lot of times with this like, remember when they were saying like they were listing all these people that were supposedly gonna be part of the new Jurassic World movie? And they're like, this person's involved in like a day later, they've dropped out of the project. This person's involved, they've dropped out of the project. That movie looks really, really good, Boy Kills World, and if he mm -hmm. does, that would be fantastic. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. Does this, uh, have you read the, the last run? I own it, I have yeah. not read it, I heard it was very good. Yeah. So this is one of those ideas. I don't know if it's like, is it, a, is it a spoiler to give away which turtle it is that's left? Probably. Yeah. Well, we'll leave it off, but it's not the one you'd expect because I think most people know which one they would expect because in the original, I think most people give a lot of the credit to Raphael being the most complex character, at least having what I felt was the most character development in the early movies, uh, you know, in the Mirage comics and stuff like that. So it doesn't go the direction you want it to. It's actually a good example of when subverting expectations actually works hmm. rather than subverting expectations just for the sake of doing so. But we'll wait and see. And uh, I'll kind of follow this really closely because it's a really interesting concept. I want to see the guy in a suit, though. I don't want CG. Exactly. As I said, yeah. like Jim Henson's Creature Shop yeah. actually get yes. live action Actor animatronics. In the suit. Yep. 
just uh, like the first one. Go watch the first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie on, that takes just just to watch the final fight scene on the roof. It's worth it just for the fight scene on the roof. Mm. So, all right. Oh, and I, I, I mentioned because yesterday we were talking about this, and you mentioned Yasuke, the the guy that invented Japan. Yes, I didn't know this. Yeah, but, um, yeah. If you guys go ahead, the first black sam, the first black samurai, the first samurai, the first <laughs> Japanese man of all time. Yes, he invented Japan, Yasuke. <laughs> They're uh, they're making a movie about him. Sweet. And you Truly, mentioned that the there truth was will be, finally uh, come out. You you mentioned there was going to be like an Assassin's Creed with this back in the day. They, yes. They bailed on it. No, no, it's happening. It's going to be. Oh, they're still apparently doing it. Assassin's Creed in Japanish. It's going to be split between uh, a lady samurai assassin and then a guy that's kind of I don't know if it's Yasuke the character. Yeah. But you know, it's going to be a brother in Japan in the old days, and he's going to found Japan. I'm pretty sure. That, that will be the ending. Spoilers. Perfect. It's, uh, it's the Japanese that took it from him, the country. Right. As usual. They colonized The Japanese, it. yeah, they stole it. Mm -hmm. Just like Greece was invented, Egypt was invented. Netflix taught me this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Cleopatra. The Greeks were actually originally African. Cleopatra. So were the yeah. Vikings? Yes. Oh, I saw one of those the other day where somebody posted a picture of, like, <laughs> I don't even remember what they were talking about. And somebody goes, imagining the uh, Vikings as white people is hilarious. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> Truly comical. Yeah. Look, Netflix is, if the fact that that statement exists proves to you that college and Netflix are doing their job. Mm -hmm. uh, they're accomplishing exactly what they want to accomplish. Mm -hmm. the, they, they go and watch the Viking show with, uh, what's her name, Catherine Winnick, and they're like, this is ridiculous. Look at the race swaps going on here. Or King yeah. Henry as a woman. Yes. Black woman. All right. Uh, so thousands of Ford Broncos, the infamous O.J. Simpson getaway car, are recalled on the same day that he died. Coincidence? An odd coincidence. It's a very odd coincidence. Maybe they waited for that. <laughs> a lot of people are talking about O.J. Simpson. I didn't know that people really still cared. Yeah. Um, but yeah. And Norm MacDonald. I saw this morning a video of one of the jurors the yeah. doing an interview where she just straight up admitted that 90% of the jury acquitted him for racial reasons, for yeah. revenge over Rodney King. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. What was your What was your first thought when you saw that O.J. Simpson had died? Uh, well, I mean, we've he went to jail again years ago, right? Because he held up a pawn shop or something yep. that had some trophy from him. So I was very surprised that if he didn't kill them, I mean, he's not a criminal. Why would he do something like that? Hold hold up a store? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That seems strange to me. Yeah, it's a, another odd coincidence. Technically, he was a criminal anyways because I think he had domestic violence. Um, convict or did he? Or they were they complaints, but not convictions. Not sure. Um, so you know, well, he was there a, were no signs. Yeah. There were no red flags. No. I, uh, he was I very nothing funny to see in, here. Uh, those Naked Gun movies. So a long time ago, and a lot of people, you know, if you're if you're younger, you wouldn't understand the cultural significance necessarily of. I saw Mike Cernovich posted a thing. He said, "For Gen Z only, what were your OJ Sim What was your OJ Simpson moment?" Yeah. And what he meant by that was it's kind of the same thing as like the where were you on this date moment. 9-11. 9-11. Like that's – and the funny thing is we were – I was talking about this with Olivia last night. I have two. I have 9-11 and when Heath Ledger died. And the when Heath Ledger died one is only because I got hit by a car. Like a car hit me – hit my car and then we got out and we both had just heard that Heath Ledger <laughs> died. That's the only reason I remember it. I don't have any other – Really? M m I, maybe I'm just self-absorbed. For Gen Z, I don't know if there is uh, an analog for that because Gen Z doesn't take anything seriously. Yeah. <laughs> any tragedy or, or serious moment. People like, mentioned Columbine for us. I don't remember where I was when Columbine happened. For Gen Z, like – maybe COVID COVID definitely because they're always talking about how they have a strange nostalgia for when lockdown started yep. or um, maybe George Floyd is is the Gen Z oh, you know, Jay yeah. Simpson yeah that I do actually I do remember where I was but that was because I, I was literally watching the video on Facebook it's local news for you yeah basically but you know what there are a lot of like water watershed moments in our lives that we will remember where we were if like say January 6th I remember hearing about the riots as it was happening. I'm in my office yeah. and I shouted, you idiots. Yeah. Like, what have you just done? Pandora's box has just been opened. 
false or, flag to hell. You're <laughs> right. As it was happening, I'm seeing the riots. I'm like, what have you guys done? Yeah. Uh, also, Akira Toriyama. This is for nerds. Like, yes. When he, I legitimately was grieving when he died. Uh, Dragon Ball Z's artist and stuff. Yeah. Like there are certain people like you. You remember where you were, what you were thinking. He was young too. He wasn't that like old. sixty something. He was only in his sixties. But the OJ thing, I remember because I was telling you last night, we were in our fifth grade, fifth grade class. Our teacher rolls in a TV to hear the verdict. She stopped class, fifth grade, and our teacher needed to know what happened. And when they said not guilty, she's like, I don't believe it. And none of the kids Did knew the what kids she was talking care? about. We didn't know what she was talking about. Because someone in the chat said they were around that age as well. And they yeah. they said like that what, their what, class 11? was screaming, you can't squeeze the juice. <laughs> like, where did they, where did they live? I don't know, live? it must That's have been a different question. city. They must have been cheering then. Yeah. But yeah interesting but yeah i think the verdict after the rodney king thing for any younger person that doesn't know like rodney king massive riots look up the rooftop koreans uh there's so many stories but april 26 I, 1992 yeah. by sublime they didn't want a repeat of this yeah. if you look at like the george floyd riots on steroids whatever yeah um so that's pretty much the only reason oj got off I just think that I have no, maybe I'm just self-absorbed, but I don't have any other like deep no. moments where I can't think of uh, mm -hmm. um, where I, I imagine for people who are like sports fans, maybe where they were, like if uh, like, like if they won the World Series or something like that, especially if it's a team. Like I imagine a lot of people in Chicago when the when the when the Cubs finally won a World Series were like, yes, I remember where I was when the Cubs, you know, finally broke that gazillion year losing streak. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so I don't have any moments like that. Um, another famous race swap is Khloe Kardashian, who pretends that she's not O.J. Simpson's daughter. And she's been getting trolled hard. <laughs> a lot of people were commenting, sorry for your loss after O.J. died on her Instagram. Because a lot of people think that Kris Jenner had an affair with O.J. Simpson. Yep. Uh, or if not O.J. Simpson, maybe just some other guy. Yeah. Uh, Rob Kardashian's Could have been Caitlyn Jenner. widow claims that she was told by Rob Kardashian that Chloe was not his, but he just chose not to address it. Yeah. Yeah. Weird stuff. She was trending worldwide yesterday for She's, that reason. She like looks at her phone. She's like, huh, I didn't put any posts out today. What the hell is going on? I will never forget watching them on Keeping Up where they do the genetics test. And they have the envelope for Chloe's results, and they just decide not to open it. Wow. <laughs> so we're like, you know what? I'm part of this family. It doesn't matter anyway. What? Yeah. I saw somebody else say what they should do is like, uh, because those cop cars from when OJ did all that are like now out. Didn't of, do all that. Didn't do all when that. Allegedly did all that. Um, <laughs> Are now out of out of use. They should get a bunch of them at auction in the white Bronco, and he should be brought to the funeral in a procession with all the <laughs> cop cars following the white Bronco that has him in the back, mm -hmm. all the way to the funeral home. Mm -hmm. That would be sweet. A, a very nice send off to a nice man. Uh, Do you see the Norm joke of like he was in heaven, and he's like, "Oh, I heard. Did you hear OJ died?" And he's like, "Where is he?" Because because he's in heaven, yeah. Norm McDonald. The uh the and um. Another comedian I was watching yesterday, Carter Anderson, does one where it's, it's he, whenever a celebrity dies, he does it's like they get to heaven yeah. and he meets all the other famous people. And this one, he gets he's down there, he goes finally in heaven. It's a little hot down here, mm -hmm. hot around the collar. And he gets there and he's there with like Stalin and Hitler and all of the uh, all of those people. He's like, I thought I was going to heaven, and they all just start laughing at him. <laughs> That's what happens. Yeah. All right, um, I wonder. Like, I can't think of any other story that we've covered recently. That will be, do you think this is one of those ones where by the end of the year, this story will still be relevant? Like they always do like, what were the biggest stories of this year? I bet you OJ ends up being on that list. No. They were also no. talking about, oh, in an election year, maybe not. No, um, yeah. But they were also talking about how he was like, up until the moment he died, he's like, two months ago was like his last video. He's like, I'm perfectly healthy. He definitely seemed like he was in good spirits. And he didn't seem as sickly as that, as. No. As if he was going to die two months later. I guess prostate cancer sneaks up on you. I don't know enough about it. I think we should be more scared of it. Yeah. I didn't know it could kill you. Yeah. How does that kill you? Well, I need to know these things. You can ask we OJ have a lot of me. breast cancer awareness in this society, but yeah. not enough prostate cancer Fingers awareness. out for prostate cancer, guys. <laughs> what about rat awareness? <laughs> rat awareness. There is a giant inflatable rat that just randomly showed up in downtown Seattle. Um... <laughs> I, the reason for this apparently 
is that he is a character known as Scabby the Rat, associated with labor union workers <laughs> who are on strike. A rat is a contractor accused of working against their employees, paying st substandard wages, not paying pensions, or not guaranteeing standard benefits. Wait, where the hell is the mob in all this? Aren't they the ones who would be calling all everybody else scabs? I guess. Well, yeah. the mob and the uh, unions are very closely tied together. Exactly. Anyway. So yeah, it's... Uh, it mysteriously appeared, but everyone knows how it got there. <laughs> it was... Uh, there are rats bigger than this in New York City. Yes, there are. Yes. So, Possum yeah. rats. Yeah. I, I read an article the other day, or I read a headline. I shouldn't say I read the article. It was like rat abortion. They were talking about like the size of the rats in New York and having to like do rat They're abortion. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. What? <laughs> They're not just killing the rats? They're like going to stop them from breeding somehow. <laughs> <laughs> so instead of just shooting it, they have just... to manually... Give it an abortion. Yes. Great. Yeah. Yeah. We, we let the rat live. Yeah. Reproductive <laughs> rights for rat mothers. <laughs> well, isn't that just so Democrat, though? Yes. Yes. We need abortion it, it's rights. It's not really for rats. a lie. Yeah, they're not rats until they're born. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Eric Adams. Thanks, guys. Uh, that, Speaking of New York, yes. there is a movie about <laughs> yeah. Trump coming out soon. With Sebastian Stan, Sebastian Stan, the Winter Soldier, if you don't know, uh -huh. playing Trump. Do you think, okay, let's let's look at this picture. Do you think he looks like him at all? Yeah. Like, when it was first announced, we talked about the casting, and we thought it was a pretty good pick. I don't I just know. didn't, we, we kind of left it on, they're going to depict him as a monster, mm -hmm. regardless of what public perception was well, of him the at the time. Yeah, read the description of the movie. It's like, it's like a... Yeah. It, it premiered at Cannes, and the biographical drama explores Trump's career as an aspiring real estate tycoon in New York City in the 70s and 80s. It's described as a mentor-protege narrative that documents the start of an American dynasty and tackles themes including power, corruption, and deception. It delves into the relationship between Trump and Roy Cohn, the New York City prosecutor, oft remembered for working with Senator Joseph McCarthy during the second Red Scare. Its official logline reads, The Apprentice is a dive into the underbelly of the American empire. It charts a young Donald Trump's ascent to power through a Faustian deal with the influential right-wing lawyer and political fixer Roy Cohn. I wonder who's going to play Giuliani in this. Satan. Maybe they just get Giuliani to do it himself and they de-age him. So they're only covering the 1970s and 80s Trump, not the 90s or 2000s? Well, I call it The Apprentice. I mean, I guess yeah. they said it's an apprentice theme. That I get that's, it. That makes sense. It's a, well, it's a double entendre. It's the prequel to the next one. Yeah. I want to know when who's this... playing his wives. Mm. That would be more interesting. They're going to get like Sabrina Carpenter to play <laughs> to play his first wife. I and... really do. Like, do you think he could? Like, he, okay... 2024 happens, he doesn't win the election, and he just goes, the hell with it, I'm bringing back The Apprentice. And he just- That would be awesome. And he just, he gets the producers from like uh, uh, Shark Tank yeah. to get involved, and he gets uh, <laughs> ABC, like he's like, Disney, look, you need me more than I need you. I'm getting old, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in my twilight years, I could just live my life comfortably, but you, you guys suck, and your ratings suck, and everything that you do sucks, you need Trump, and he's like, Time to, imagine the ratings for bringing back The Apprentice. Yeah. What if he did like a uh, like a political version of The Apprentice, where he he, he gets like political staffers yes. or something? Bring back political Apprentice. <laughs> that would be cool. Uh, and he was at Chick Fil A. Yeah. Unfortunately, I wish this audio was louder. He had one of his louder. infamous Trump moments. I wish this audio was louder, but it's so quintessential Trump. It's just it's, the greatest yeah. thing ever. 30 milkshakes. 30 milkshakes. They get paid by the hour. <laughs> See, you're doing. The, you're, don't do that, okay? We know that. They know that. But it's stop just, talking about reality. Yes. <laughs> <that's>... <laughs> they love him. My, my favorite part was there were people who were like people who hate his guts. Were like, I hate that he's this charismatic. Right. Like, like I hate he, that he can he can win people over. They this can't way. resist him. So is Biden gonna do this though? <laughs> he's gonna go to a, like a Popeyes or something. Yes. I need to his, see this. His version of this is chaka chaka chip. Yeah, <laughs> that's his. Well, didn't play. no? He Why did do that with some kids, place? though, right? 
Did he not? I don't want to look up like what we should probably look up what food they were eating. He sat at some random table at some like family dinner with. He like, went three... to some like random black teenager's yeah. house and ate barbecue with them. Is that better or worse than <laughs> it was Hillary really talking weird. about having hot sauce in her purse? Yeah. <laughs> hot sauce in my bag, swag. <laughs> but you see, you kids like Beyonce these days. <laughs> All right. I, so he's doing very well, apparently. What? This is Georgia, right? Yes. <clears throat> so it's over. He wins. Yes, he's going to win. There's a 0% <laughs> chance. And you know what? He doesn't come off as pandering the way Hillary does with the I always carry hot sauce or her stupid speech about she's saying I am in no ways tired or whatever she said with her fake southern accent or something. Yeah. This it, is. He's sorry. always been a true populist, even though he like grew up rich. It's a pretty incredible balancing act. What is the example people always give? Like him putting ketchup on steak because like... Yeah, uh, it, he has middle class sensibilities. He's at McDonald's still, yeah. though, doesn't he? Yes, it's like that That was a big thing. It was like when the... It was like a college football team won and they all got to go to the White House and the like the chef was out or something and they couldn't cook. So he just ordered like endless McDonald's. Yeah. Which made me think of the movie Richie Rich where he's got the McDonald's in his house. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what I imagine. Trump like, has Richie Rich energy. He does. Well, this may be a controversial th position, but we talked about OJ and how the black man's always being held down by the system. Mm -hmm. Trump is the blackest president we've ever had. Look what happened. He was in jail and stuff. He got grills diamond teeth and everything Wait. he came out stronger than before <laughs> he got a, that. a little <laughs> tattoo right there of a teardrop okay. he's blacker blacker than <laughs> barack obama i'm on record as saying we this. saw boops for trump like <laughs> that happened it's just uh, the way he talks it's just you can't help but but like the guy when you hear him talk mm. even when he's can i curse you can curse even when he's an asshole you laugh because he's right and that's new york energy that's new jersey energy when we yell that's how we talk to our friends mm -hmm. it's like how are you doing motherfucker yeah it's very like <laughs> it's friendly i think people from other parts of the country don't like it was like the first time i went to new york city and everybody that greets you they don't say hi they don't say hello they say who is this to their friend look at this I'm, asshole yeah like what are you, you get doing? Used to it. Yeah, it becomes, it's, it's you know, hazing. They're testing for weakness. Yes, I love it. And he should just. Uh, on, what he should do is Biden's promising like student loan debt forgiveness. I think it's milkshakes for everyone. Everybody in the country gets free milkshakes for life if they if they vote for him. Do you think that Margot Robbie could play Ivanka? Or sorry, not Ivanka, Ivana, his who, second who wife. Who did they cast? As, I thought they listed Ivana in this as as who plays her. Wait, really? I think it said down here somewhere who plays Ivana in this movie. Margot Robbie would be so iconic as Ivana. So she gets to be both in. That would make sense. The Wolf Monopoly of Wall movie, Wolf, Wolf of Wall, Wolf Wall, Street, Wall Street, and Monopoly movie, Apprentice. and the Trump movie. Yeah. She's kind of pigeonholing herself just a little bit. But yeah. I love that for her. Love it. Well, Melania <laughs> still looks like 20 years old. That's so true. She could play herself. Who would play Melania, though? She's got to play herself. She doesn't have to talk that much. She's it would be like her. some. Like really zoomer looking, like they get Madison they'll, Beer. They'll, 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 <laughs> the worst is they'll get Florence Pugh. That's the Ugh. worst part. They'll get Florence Pugh to play somebody. Ugh. I don't want to see a Florence Pugh. I want a black actor to get this role. I think it's time for a black Melania. Yeah, well, black Trump. He honestly, is black already. Honest. Okay. Honestly, if Kevin Netflix, Hart. if Netflix went out there, because they just remember they did they did the Cleopatra, the race swapped Cleopatra. Mm -hmm. If they just went all in and got like uh, um, a sat like a satirist to make a Trump movie where they actually did do a black Trump, <laughs> it would make insane headlines yeah. everywhere. And I guarantee you that like right wing people would un would like ironically love it. Yes. Mm -hmm. They'd win them back a lot of goodwill. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, just go and get um, Delroy Lindo or, <laughs> or uh, um, who else could, uh, Idris Elba to play Trump. <laughs> perfect. Yeah. You didn't get James Bond, but you can play Trump. Yeah. That's perfect. It's better. And, like, you just don't address that it's satire and you just make the movie. That would be epic. Because everybody makes those memes, right? They show it's like Black Blom Panther. Someone said Blomp. <laughs> Blom <laughs> that would be Blomp. Because, you know, like everybody makes those memes, right? It's like they, they show like Black Panther and it's Ryan Gosling. Yes. They show Elon Musk, but it's, um, who, who's the one they do is Elon Musk. They do a couple, like they, it looks like Tiger Woods to me when they do the Elon <laughs> Musk one. Yeah. Uh, and they do all of those. Oh, oh no, they, write, they do Ryan Gosling as Obama too. He plays Black Panther yeah. and Obama. So yeah. they could do that. Well, any white guy could play Obama, really. 
There you go. Easy. All right. All right. Has to be gay though. <laughs> We're gonna talk about AI a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Okay. So, did you? Uh, this is a this is a hot button issue these days. But Jack Posobiec <laughs> posted this the other day. Uh, it says Star Wars: The Phantom Menace, 1950s Super Panavision 70, all made in AI, and he says way better than the original. So I'm I'm clicking on this here to see the the full screen one, but we can just watch the the smaller version here. It's a minute and seven seconds long. Are you a diehard Star Wars guy? I'm an enjoyer of Star Wars. Okay, so like, like uh, I would uh, six out of ten. Okay. All yeah. right. Here we go. A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, the saga continues with Star Wars: The Phantom Menace. Amidst the backdrop of galactic turmoil, the Jedi Knights, guardians of peace and justice, face a new threat that could plunge the galaxy into darkness. Meet Qui Gon Jinn, a wise and noble Jedi Master. His apprentice, the young and eager Obi-Wan Kenobi, and Anakin Skywalker, a boy with a destiny that will shape the fate of the galaxy. Uh, don't but like lurking AI, in the Yoda. shadows is a sinister plot orchestrated by the Sith, led by the menacing Darth Maul, seeking to manipulate galactic events to their advantage. As ancient prophecies unfold and destinies collide, the fate of the galaxy hangs in the balance as heroes rise and villains reveal their true intentions. Prepare yourself for an epic journey filled with action, adventure, and the timeless struggle between the forces of light and darkness. Star Wars, The Phantom Menace, a thrilling chapter in the legendary saga. May the Force be with you. Thoughts? Is it better than the original? <laughs> I hate AI, but that looks really good. <laughs> You have the humility to admit when it slaps. I can't not say that it looks good. Yeah. I, I'm not going to lie. I just hate AI. I want to yeah. see that movie. But have somebody actually make the movie. Make it just like that. That's yeah. great as pre -vis, But now we have to actually make it. Yeah. Well, it uh, seems like most people, maybe most of our viewers, have a positive outlook on AI and the way it's going to infiltrate the movie industry because obviously a lot of people are hurt by what, what they've Hollywood been giving doing. us yeah. uh, from human artists is falling short of our expectations and they think that AI could serve as an alternative to improve the quality of, of our entertainment. But you've spoken pretty strongly against AI and yeah. you basically, am I wrong? You think that AI art is not real art. We have to look at what the definition of art is versus like what's an image or what's an illustration. These are images, moving images on a screen. Mm -hmm. The person who made them, if they call themselves an artist, I would question there's a gray area. There's definitely vision there. There's good execution. It's made well. But I require a human hand to be on for, see the word art is so like, I'm so strict about it. Mm -hmm. I need someone to be more present. I'm not typing a prompt in and then it gets filled in by a computer. I see a lot of abuses happening in the future of like, I use the Shrek example, if you guys have heard about um, the Shrek DreamWorks or something. Uh, there's a company that is behind Shrek. We're saying we're going to cut like 80% of our staff or have 80% of the film be generated by AI and then we'll have people do like keyframes and really talented people can come in. A, it's going to cut out a lot of jobs. Uh, it's going to prevent a lot of uh, middle to low level artists from gaining necessary experience to become experts. Mm -hmm. um, there's just a lot of things that can go wrong. I don't know how much in depth you want me to go into it. Go but, for it. Well, no, I, it, depends on the, um, it depends on the medium we're talking about. Like in comics, if you told me AI generated a comic book, and these are just images where we took the JPEGs that, uh, I don't know, Mid Journey gave us, and mm -hmm. we pasted them into panels. In comics, a lot of a lot of the art, I would say, needs soul. It needs the hand of a person who has put every one of those scratches on that piece of paper. I need, in my art, I need, there has to be like a communication happening. If I draw a picture that you see, I'm talking mm -hmm. to you through the medium of, say, a drawing. I put that graphite down on paper. It's the medium, but really it's my mind talking to your mind. And I'm trying to communicate something yeah. to you. Um, there's something, when you use AI to fill in the blanks, uh, obviously it's very hard to make a trailer like this from scratch and you have to have actors and special effects and stuff. But in the arts, um, you need, 
humanity, spirit. I have to use abstract words that don't, not everyone even agrees that spirit exists, but like I need to know that somebody sweated over a piece of paper or a stylus mm. or something. Uh, someone once used an, uh, an example of uh, in-betweening uh, in 3D. If I'm animating, say I'm going to have Superman jump, mm -hmm. I will keyframe him crouching and then him extended and then have the computer do the in-betweens. Yeah. It's better if you do all the in-betweens yourself by hand, like in traditional animation, say like a Studio Ghibli movie. Mm -hmm. The reason we value that more is because some poor bastard had to sit there and draw all the in-between frames. But usually you would hand that to an intern or some lower level artist and the keyframes are done by the experts, the, the masters. Yeah. But in order to become a master, you have to put in the hours of doing in-between frames. So there's going to be a huge cutoff of like, if, if there's more AI movies, let's say, the fat cat business people are going to make a ton more money. So they're going to be cheering about that. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, and then a lot of like lower to mid-level artists are just going to quit or start using AI as a shortcut yeah. up the mountain. And the problem with that is I argued with somebody, I won't say his name, where he was saying that I'm a artist by type. I did a rudimentary drawing and then I had the AI finish it for me. But what the AI was simulating was essentially 10,000 hours of practice and him basically taking credit for it. And I, someone who spent 20,000 hours, however many hours, uh, learning to draw, am insulted by someone. Like if I'm climbing a mountain, if I'm hiking mm. and someone takes a helicopter up and says, I'm the same as you, I'm like not even close, dude. And when you have an industry filled with high level or low level artists who are using a tool like AI to help them, yeah. It's like being in a bicycle race, but you're using training wheels. Okay. Now, I've been called elitist. People like me are called elitist because it's, you know, God forbid we actually try and spend years learning something. Mm -hmm. If you put a piece of paper in my hand, I have a sketchbook in my bag. I always carry it around. Yep. I can draw anything anytime I want if someone prompts me to do it. But if someone uses AI, they cannot draw anything they want at any time. Now, in a medium like comics, where speed matters... Yeah. Uh, you can't use AI and then just like, if I generated, I got Ghost of the Badlands here. If I, I'm talking too much, I'm sorry, but. No, go for it. If I had an AI generate a bunch of images of like the desert and cowboys and horses and stuff, and then I just traced over them, there's no soul there. Yeah. I'm not communicating anything. And I think that lowers the value of the product. But instead, I went to Arizona myself. I went to the locations where the story is taking place. I rented a car. I sweated my butt off. It was a pain in the butt, but I did it because I think the audience deserves and the art world deserves real art. And some people can complain that I'm using the word real art. Mm -hmm. This book, you know, represents like a year or a little less than a year of like really hard work, research. I'm really trying. And I think that makes it more intrinsically valuable than if I just had a computer generate a bunch of... Yeah. Like, I don't know if the well, end user I think user people cares. would agree it makes it more intrinsically valuable, but they would say the one that is that has less intrinsic value still qualifies as art. And I think where most of the confusion stems and what you're referring to it is that most Westerners, at least now, are undecided or completely against the idea that soul exists and has anything to do with human activity it's it's really so the output is the only thing that matters but you're also referring to a valid concern that ai is going to make human artists less competent at what they do it has many downsides speed if you're a business person it can seem like a good idea crisis party thank you <laughs> oh please we danced during the crisis party. That was uh, automated, so uh, every hundred dollars we get a crisis party. Thank you guys. I see. <laughs> um, he, uh, we didn't just like I didn't just like trigger that to, right. to hold everything off. Hope uh, you uh, remember I, your point. Yes. <laughs> uh, what was I saying? Ah, it's okay if you can't remember. <laughs> my my point to all this though is that at the corporate level, when we're talking Hollywood, when we're talking about big budget motion pictures, especially today, with the prevalence of things like these companies buying up IP without real uh, love for the properties that they're owning, that what they're worried about now is get it done fast, get it done cheap, 
not even cheap because they're not they're yeah, not, not making cheap. movies for cheap anymore. Definitely not cheap. We, me and you were talking yesterday. I said the reason why the shows on the Sci-Fi Network were so uh, likable is because it was clear they didn't have a lot of money. They said, we're just going to make it. We don't have a lot of money to do it, so we got to find soul elsewhere, whether it's in the character development or all these other things. But Hollywood isn't really looking for soul. They're looking to get it done and it put it out there. There is a contract that has to be written between the creator and the audience. Like, I'll watch old Twilight Zone episodes and buy it because I understand there's a guy in a suit on the wing of an airplane, and it looks pretty jank, but I believe it. Because yeah. I've agreed with the creators, I'm going to, it's called suspension of disbelief. Uh, I'm going to suspend my disbelief. I know I'm watching a TV show, but I'm going to pretend that it's real. Correct. Even though I see the Ninja Turtles and there's a guy in an animatronic suit, I'm going to pretend that it's real. But the more, the closer you get to uh, high fidelity, you end up with something called the uncanny valley. Have you heard of this? Yes. So the, the more real it looks for anyone that doesn't know, the more unsettling it looks in your subconscious. So movies that look too good, you can still feel when it's just a little wrong. And AI can fill in that gap to a certain degree, but that's not what, where the magic of creativity comes from. I love the impressionists as artists, but their paintings were slapped together very fast. And it's really just a bunch of colors. But because you fill in the blank with your imagination, we're going to put on our fun time hats. You now, as the audience, become a participant in the art, and that makes it more valuable to you. Yeah. If I'm just sitting there being spoon-fed entertainment, I have less chance of developing a bond with it. That's why a lot of the recent Star Wars movies, it's one of the recent, one of the reasons. Nobody cares about them because there's no soul to them, there's no pain. You can't feel, and I'm in that stupid abstract place with art, um, talking out of my butt but well, you were like, also talking you said you watched rogue one the other day you like you you watched rogue one it seemed yeah. decent to yeah. me uh it seemed like it really was made with an creative intent despite all the like creative interference that happens from the business side of things i think that's because gareth edwards is an he cared. artist and he cares yeah right? he really cares and you can tell and then kathleen kennedy said no we can't have that happen again yeah and then even i wanted to see the solo um that those uh, two guys made the yeah. Lego Lego movie guys, I forget their names. But I wanted to see their version of Solo because it seemed that they were really gonna go for the comedy angle, they were gonna do something really weird and fun. But then creative uh, business interference always happens, the higher the budget, the more chefs there are in the kitchen. Yep. Um, but that's why I like art made by small teams that really matters to them. Mm -hmm. There's so much more I could say, but go All on. Right. Well, we also had that example of AI in Fallout 4. Yes. Uh, yeah, this is a completely different version of that, ladies and gentlemen. Somebody made this the other day. This goes with the gaming discussion that's going on right now. Yeah. <laughs> so this guy uh, says... The flatness bothered him. He basically, if you're listening rather than watching, uh, he edited Ella Purnell's character to wear skin-tight leggings and also changed her body proportions to give her a fat ass. <laughs> basically <laughs> she's working out down there yeah the and this this angered a lot of people but one person said to be fair modding fallout to make characters look like this after release is a tradition as old as time it's true but others were really angry um <laughs> one said ella purnell should be given legal authority to this guy what uh, another one said fallout fans when they realize real women don't look like their modded hyper sexualized barbie doll maximum jiggle physics anime waifu fallout 4 character they can. <laughs> they can look like that. they can look like that i don't know the game so is that is that something that's that would in the be game. what the mods would look like but not the original that, i'm release. sorry but that's what you see on the right there is no different than something you'll see on instagram if you open instagram right now if you're if you're a dude right so. but then i guess it's like why not just open instagram yeah <laughs> well they're intentionally not that i see stuff like that on my timeline i'm right. just saying it exists right i've heard i've heard stories You've heard <laughs> from from many people from many people they tell me about this all the time i've never looked yes never looked. everyone knows they're intentionally de-sexifying uh, <laughs> their traditional characters and upping the sexiness of traditionally uh, overlooked types of characters. Um, this is, uh, do you want to go into the Stellar Blade conversation yeah, or is yeah, it too early? It. No, go for it. Well, we were saying off air, like a Stellar Blade is a game with uh, 
cons a lot of people are angry, I guess, on the left because it's a traditionally sexy character yeah. or something, even though it's a scan of a real woman and it's worked on by female developers. They wanted to create a character that was visually appealing or whatever. And uh, a lot of the lefties are complaining that this is objectification and all that stuff. But I see an obvious uh, paradox because they praise Baldur's Gate 3 in which you can have sex, make your whole uh, party naked and run around the whole game, the whole campaign naked. There's gay sex, straight sex, all kinds of weird stuff. You can have sex with a bear yeah. as a gay vampire, as I do in my daily life. Um, <laughs> and they don't mind that. Uh, they just want it to be like rainbow flavored, I guess. They don't want, like the Lara Croft example. Everybody uh, says Lara Croft has been desexified over the years. I've never who cares, Lara Croft? I, I think they're boring games anyway. But um, the idea of we're going to make a character that's visually appealing, I think is especially ironic because lady gamers, and some lady gamers checked me on this, um, lady gamers are jealous of sexy characters. Whereas if I play as a beefy Conan type of guy. Do you think it's lady gamers or lady game developers? All right, so lady gamers... I really question like how many of them are going to be playing, say, Stellar Blade. Mm -hmm. I'm going to guess like next to none. Mm -hmm. uh, the stereotype is that a lot of lady gamers, they call themselves gamers, but they only play games like Candy Crush or something Phone like games. that. Whatever. I'm not even going to make that argument right now. Let's say that they're going to play Stellar Blade, or they would, but she's too sexy, and that makes me jealous. The idea of a female developer saying, like, I don't want to have a c character that's too visually appealing doesn't make any sense business-wise. Who's going to bother playing a game where your character looks like some guy on the street? Yeah. I want to play as Conan. I want to be a beefy, huge dude if I'm swinging a huge sword. Men find it aspirational. Women yeah. are offended by it. Not all of them, but yeah, it's there is it's a, a stereotype. Yeah. But yeah, I was checked on this. I know lady gamers, and they play like real games, not like phone games. I was playing with my wife. Uh, we've been playing like Stardew Valley or even Yakuza uh, Like yep. a Dragon. We have a great time. But we don't have this hang-up, which is a fake hang-up anyway. If I'm going to play a game and I am this main character. I'm playing as a character. I know I'm playing as a character. Which is where the argument about representation comes in and why it's ridiculous. it matters. I was, okay, so I was watching this thing today. I don't remember who the actress was. Uh, she won an award. Um, it was one of the ladies from Black Panther, I think. It might have been, Le or maybe it was Lupita Nyong'o. It's talking about how she loved... Um, Titanic growing up and she had a huge crush on Leo. I was like, so does that mean that you have the next person who plays Rose has can't be Kate Winslet has to look like you for you to love this movie, this character. You know what I'm saying? Like the, yeah. that actually disproves the idea that representation is inherently useful in those situations because if it's done right, you should identify as loving the character, sure. not needing to have something necessarily in common with the character. If anything, the characters I want to see the most are the ones that have as little to do with me as possible because I don't live an interesting enough life to be made a movie out of. Well, I grew up watching Bruce Lee and Jackie Chan movies. Mm -hmm. Like little did I know they were Asian. <laughs> I, I can't believe I can't believe I was tricked I, I grew up happens. I loved Blade you yep. remember that filth did you know that Blade is a black man I couldn't believe that I watched that movie like 50 times and I never knew he was black yep. I was tricked yep. I can't have that and it's just racially sad that all that stuff was just so normal back then and now it's just disgusting. So, it's so disgusting. They all should have been Greek, obviously, in well, order to all, represent you. Everyone accurately. wants to be Greek, let's be honest. <laughs> we invented everything. And I will and I know there's gonna be a super chat saying you invented gayness too. Whoa. You met, he's like, yeah, that was before you, my time. No, you preempted no, that one. <laughs> no, because I've heard it a million times. But first of all, you've never met a Greek woman. We invented gay gayness to get away from the women. <laughs> it was necessary. He's like, look, Greek, I saw my big fat Greek wedding. Everybody is jealous of the Greeks. <laughs> I understand. They, they stole everything from us. Culture, civilization, philosophy, whatever. Democracy. America ruined democracy. I see, I see this stuff and I just see a whole bunch of political discussion where there just doesn't need to be any in, in things like this for the games because they're taking offense where no offense was intended. No. Uh, a beautiful character is not made to make you feel insecure. 
it's made because the height of beauty is what people want to see in things that they go and seek out. At least that has been true for all of time. I would like, let's talk about a market that's not having a discussion right now. Like, is there like a big push for like ugly women on OnlyFans? Like, I'm sure there are, <laughs> oh. I'm sure there are women that, that do fine that are ugly, but yeah. is there really like, a, does somebody get into the business and their manager is like, you know what you should do? You should get ugly. Like you'll make more, you'll enter that top 0.1% in no time if you just take like three points off your hotness factor. I don't think that that's a thing. Uh, in, in porn, as it's in, different as than, fetish, um, um, than other medium. Yeah. But uh, yeah, like yeah. I get what point yeah. you're trying to yeah. make. Well, look, if, if we're <laughs> making a game, let's say we're a development studio and we're going to make a game with a cool main character that players are going to want to play as. A, you can make a game where you can customize your own main character, design like Dragon's Dogma, I don't know if you're familiar. You can make your own character and it was very, uh, you can make any character from any you know race or whatever size. You can be creative or you're gonna create a character that you cannot customize, like say, Lara Croft or something. You have to make them visually appealing because if I'm just shopping for games and there's 10 games that come out this year yeah. or this month, and I have to pick, I only have enough money to buy two of them. I'm gonna pick the one that looks cool. And that's how most people buy their games. Yeah. Like if you took, like I, I would argue the Stellar Blade example, I would not play Stellar Blade. First of all, I'm not interested in, it's based on like near Automata, if you've ever heard of that, which I didn't like. Um, but it's a genre that doesn't necessarily appeal to me. But if you took a game with a cool main character and it was a game, a genre that I wasn't necessarily interested in, but I want to play as the character, maybe I'll try it out. Yeah. But if, if it's a cool game with a mid-looking character that I'm not interested in playing as, however, I saw a mod for Horizon Zero Dawn, a fat mod, where you could play as the redhead main character and she was like 400 pounds, and I pissed myself laughing. <laughs> and I said I would pay full price, unironically, if they made that game. I want to play as that character mm -hmm. And we're all gonna have a good time. Yeah. We're no, nobody's judging. Like in uh, GTA 3, you can eat a lot of uh, hamburgers and yeah. make your character huge. That's awesome. Yeah. Do uh, men want to, when they play video games, do they ever want to play characters that are hot chicks? Because that seems a little bit autogynephilic. Here's the thing now. I understand why you would say that. <laughs> when I played WoW back in the day, I made a lady character because I said, if I'm gonna stare at someone's butt for 200 hours, it's gonna be a woman. Now that was the straightest decision I ever made. I would argue. <laughs> I was not that main character, but I was controlling I her because it, let, if we're talking about relationship advice, a man needs to control this woman, right? There you go. <laughs> so I'm exactly. playing WoW, I need to control this woman. She needs to be hot, yeah. beautiful, paladin, action, and I'm like above her, like the puppet master. <laughs> Go uh -huh. slay those goblins for me, woman. As an alpha male often does. <laughs> Bring me a sandwich, woman. <laughs> yes? Uh -huh. So, autogynephia, I can see why you would say that. There, I'm sure there are trans people who played female characters. Mm -hmm. I've played many games I with think it might characters. be contributing to the trans phenomenon. Yeah, yeah, I did find myself wearing a dress while playing that character <laughs> He's sometimes. He's like, but that was just a coincidence. Yeah, yeah. Just a coincidence. It, it was very You were still an alpha. Okay. I'm very alpha. Obviously. I'm so alpha, I will only be in a locker room sauna with other men. Of course. Like, um... Taking photos. Well, you're not going to let women in your presence. No. Like that. That's they're, they're beneath That's us, really women. That's beta to do something like that. Who, no, I don't no even want to talk to that. women. I did watch the first episode of Fallout last night, um, just because you were trashing it. Mm -hmm. I was curious and... Yeah, I was I more bothered look, by... I didn't think I was trashing it. I thought I offered okay. some reasonable criticism. You offered criticisms. reasonable criticism. Okay. Yes. Yeah. But, um, you know, it wasn't good, in my opinion. I was okay. more bothered, though, by that non-binary character that you were mentioning. The, that they just threw out there. Where the, Who's in this... Where there was a, they teed up a place where there could have been a big old he, and they said they... Yeah, they the the character has they them pronouns. But when and I everything. when I point that out, like when I point that out, I acknowledge that that is something that somebody who lives in the political space will notice right away. Is not necessarily going to ruin it for somebody who's just a passive observer. I don't know. I think a passive observer knows like mm. I'm not looking at a man right now. And I will. <laughs> and I do want to point out that people pointed out to me and to you, like in the in the comments, why I was wrong about like I don't want ugly people on screen. I get it that you said it's from like inbreeding 
because of the apocalypse and all this stuff. Oh yeah, but a, that doesn't make sense because Ella Purnell is attractive. Why is the main so the main somehow so. skipped all the inbreeding uh, physiognomy and looks perfectly fine, and everyone else doesn't? I get it. It's a uh, it's art, whatever. But I would have rather they committed to the bit and just made Ella look more you know look inbred as well then right like the rest of them because otherwise you look at one really really traditionally attractive character uh and then everybody else there isn't and it just took me out of it but the explanation as to why they do makes sense so i was wrong about that that's okay. that's fine um, all right uh what would you like to do cringe or cute of the day it's up to you cringe first or cute of the day first a little segment we do here. Uh, I like the funny punchline, so start with cute, I would say. Ah, he wants All to right. go cute first. Okay. Uh, well, who's, uh, whose pets are on the docket today? This one here is from uh, <laughs> uh, Liberty, Liberty Bird. It says, he, uh, here's Daisy, Daisy Mae Doberman. A very good girl. It's snowing out in this one. Look at this. I think I might have. So sometimes I miss, like, ones that get sent in. So maybe this was sent a while ago. Okay. And I just got to it. It's a cute looking dog though. Cute. It's a cute looking dog. Thank, Thank you, you for that, Liberty Bird. Let's do a couple more here. This one is from Devin. It says, Aww. finally a pet of my own. We're not sure about what to name him yet, so I'd love to hear your ideas for both from both Bread and Mary in chat. You're catching me off guard. This is a really cute photo though. Yep. That looks like my cat. There you go. What's your cat's name? Well, we call her Penny Loaf. Okay. Yeah. Her <laughs> actual name she has not told us. Okay. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> Okay. Um, yeah, I don't. Ha I don't know if I have any ideas. We were talking yeah. about um, corgis and, and like wanting a corgi someday. It's like the only dog I would uh, I would want because it's not it's not a, a little shit dog, but it's not like a like I'd prefer a bigger dog anyways. If not, uh, if not a corgi. <laughs> they seem so full of themselves though. Yes, they, um, they know they're cute, so they got an <laughs> attitude. I love that. I, I love that. That or a Shiba. Um, <laughs> I need uh, Golden. What was the other one? The Lab chocolate lab chocolate lab or, or what is it, a, like the doodles uh, that, the the doodles that can be like the labradoodles that can be mixed with anything like there's the the Saint Bernard doodle it's like a Saint <laughs> Bernard I need a dog mix. that can at least defend the house a little bit there you go corgis aren't gonna not fight gonna somebody else. no sadly it might be not. a distraction when OJ comes for you you need somebody to. <laughs> <laughs> Still one more here. OJ is just gonna get the corgi. This is Lizzo. She used to be called Little Lissy, but things have changed. Oh no, <laughs> Little Lizzo. I love it. It's amazing. <laughs> well, Lizzo can get on the real Lizzo's workout plan for that summer bod. There you That's go. It's fine. All right, let's do cringe of the get day. Get on the cat treadmill. <laughs> All right, so this is from an account called Misandry Exists. Uh, first, there's a $20 one there. You got that? Dubby Nanners said, I loved Blade when I was a little kid, and I never once thought, oh, I'm not black, so I can't be Blade. I was still running around the backyard pretending to fight vampires and rewatching the climax where he's fighting Frost. Here's the thing. That too. was awesome. You can, watch, you can watch Blade, and you can watch The Matrix. Both will equally want you to buy, make you want to buy a leather trench coat. <laughs> Yes. Doesn't matter the race of the person who shows it to you. You can make the argument that Wesley Snipes kind of embodies a different type of cool mm. than Neo. It's certainly a different type. I heard they wanted Will Smith for Neo. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. that's true. And uh, he turned it down and they gave it to, to Keanu. Yeah. Matrix that, would have totally failed, I'm sure. No, he was no, real hot. Been yeah, I'm just he joking. was huge at that he, time. He was hot at that time. He was really like, so uh, Matrix came out in 99. 99. So that's, we're talking three years after Independence Day. Was Keanu really famous by then? He'd already or done Point Break. Not super famous. No, yeah. Point Break wasn't like that big of a no, deal. No, that became a cult classic later Wait, because of the Not Wayne's World. What's the... Swayze of it all. Bill and Ted. Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure and yeah. stuff like that. So he comes off of Independence Day in 96. Speed. Uh, oh, you're talking Keanu. I'm going back to, to Will Smith. So, oh. well, you, but you're right. Uh, yeah. Speed would have been the big one for him. But Independence Day in '96, Wild Wild West in '97, the hottest movie of all time. Um, amazing. Um, Men in Black. Yeah. Well, yeah. In that, so he's you know he's he on hot. that hot streak right there of of movies that were all like the fact that Wild Wild West isn't looked on with more derision is a testament to how awesome he was at that time. Yeah. It's amazing. So. All right, uh, let's watch this clip. It says, imagine if feminists really abided by their, by their words and did what they say. If they truly put their money where their mouth is, uh, with their amazing stupidity, they'd have been gone extinct already. Well, this is from an account called Misandry Exists. So here we go. Would you rather be stuck in a forest with a man 
or bear? Bear. Man is scary. Um, with a bear. Well, I've heard about bears. They don't always attack you, right? Unless you, like, fuck with them. So maybe a bear. <laughs> it's literally a man interviewing you. <laughs> Pro depends what man, but probably a bear. 100% a bear, which is, like, terrifying to say, but... Definitely a bear. Some men are very scary out there. A bear. <laughs> I would say, I would say a man. I love the hesitancy of the la the hesitancy of the one she who said scared. man is actually worse than the people who said bear. She's like, yeah, maybe like a guy, I guess. Yeah. Well, I love the uh, implication that like 100% of the time a man will attack you unprovoked. She's like, well, maybe some bears won't attack you, but a guy definitely will, <laughs> right? I'm trying to think about this one. It's the world we live. What's in. your yeah. answer? Yeah. Would you rather be in the woods with a woman or a bear? Um. <laughs> I, I don't want the well, woman. Well, the bear to... can't make me a sandwich. So. <laughs> they can Probably turn you the, into a sandwich. The bear would make you yeah. a sandwich. The bear would make me a sandwich. The woman would make me a sandwich. I don't so. know. I, I'm a very desirable male. I, I would, I would, <laughs> I'd be scared of the woman. I'm going to be honest. Sorry, with we you. laughed a little too hard. At cougars, that. right? We've heard of cougars. Yes. Um, yeah. It's, uh, so you would say bear? I, well, I don't know. What, what's going to have its way is with it, you? Is the bear female? I have no interest in acknowledging these man on the street questions anyways, <laughs> which are all bait fodder. So, no. A cherry I give no answers, answer. Probably. But they're, they're not even speaking American. Like, what, where are these women from? Maybe they don't know about men over there. That's true. Mm -hmm. That could be. Somebody should do a skit of this where they go to, uh, where they go and, and they talk to Wonder Woman. <laughs> and they go to Themyscira and ask them, would you rather be stuck in the woods with a bear? Yeah, or MMA man? gym with a woman. Yes. I don't. So the conclusion of this is, it's uh, just cringe of the. What day. are they thinking? He's gonna see. Okay, here's the question: Is it is it is this supposed to be cutesy? Like, ha, 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 I think I'm funny. Yeah, men are stupid. There's a little bit of seriousness there. Yeah. So yeah. there's this movie, Grizzly Man. I don't know if I think Werner Herzog was the director, and he filmed himself. The, there's a man, the Grizzly Man, filmed himself. He just lived amongst bears all the time for years, like a decade. And he was always like chilling with them and being nice to them. And at the end of the movie, I don't know if they showed it or not. I never saw it. He just got mauled. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is a bear will eventually kill you. Mm -hmm. So maybe these ladies think they'll be safe. There are all those like accounts on Instagram where it's like just Russians who own bears. Yeah. And they just they hang out with their bear. They feed their bear. They like rent their bear. Yeah, out I heard for that photo they shoots. like abuse the bears though to make them do TikToks. So. That's, uh, That's sad. So do I get to choose which bear? Do I get to choose the Russian bear, the, the Russian IG famous bear? If that's the bear, then yeah, I choose the bear. Instead of the woman. Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah. What if a gay man is in the woods coming after you? <laughs> Would you rather be a you gay? You sick the bear on right, A gay man who's like on steroids and he needs, he wants it. Can you outrun him instead he of the like bear? He like just took, like he just had a shot of Anivar. And it's like, no, it's, yeah, yeah, Predator. Get that or the cocaine bear. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cocaine gay man. He wants it. Okay. But you know what? Can I say one? I'm sorry. <laughs> At least the gay man will let you go afterwards. Maybe. Right? Maybe. Depends but on. If you want to gay bear, trauma. The gay bear. That's a okay. different story. Uh, so gay cocaine bear or gay meth bear. Uh, as opposed to oh, gay bear as in hairy man. Okay. Oh. <laughs> the bear's... bear or a bear. Look, I'll be honest though. The bear is going to kill me, right? In this scenario, there's yes. no question. The gay man, he's going to get his satisfaction. Probably let me go because I did a good job, right? He's going to thank me. He might pay me. So actually, I might get out of that, you know, with a few bucks and an OnlyFans. Mm -hmm. That's true. like I mean, may maybe no dignity or or or. Well, sense no one of needs to know. This is the yeah. woods. Okay, fair point. I mean, unless he goes and posts about it online. All right, if he's filming it for his OnlyFans, <laughs> that's just not nice. Fair point. Okay, I'm choosing none of these. That's what I'm doing. I'm choosing none <laughs> of these. You're just going to shoot your... I'm, I'm, no I'm not, comment. I'm choosing none of these. Okay, <laughs> guys, let's move on. Let's get started. Mary, tell us... Yes. Oh, now that we are an hour and 14 minutes into the show, what's going on with Gina Carano? Disney has decided to double down on their decision to slander Gina Carano. As you guys know, Gina Carano is launching a lawsuit against Disney right now with the help of Elon Musk funding it because he offered to fund anyone's lawsuit for wrongful termination over things that they posted on the X platform. So that would include Gina Carano. Um, so recently, Disney filed to dismiss this lawsuit in court 
and they basically said they were they were within their rights to fire her because her views her publicly espoused views did not align with company values this is 20 dollar one there from dave collins says so, we can only hope the interview they interviewed 100 women and those women were the only fools who answered bear otherwise our society is doomed that's how those, in, that's how those interviews are worked you'll also notice like when they do the the most toxic of interviews of women and men talking about relationships it's always at night and they're always like coming out of a nightclub and this one is at least during the day yes disney says gina carano grotesquely trivialized the holocaust which is why they had you know perfect justification to fire her Mm. and also slander her on the way out so this is a quote from their file for dismissal of the case they said that Uh, Gina Carano lost her job in 2021 because of her decision to, quote, publicly trivialize the Holocaust by comparing criticism of political conservatives to the annihilation of millions of Jewish people, notably not thousands, was the final straw for Disney. I want to point out that this is whenever these articles get made. They never link to the actual post that got her fired, which was an Instagram yeah. story post. It wasn't a tweet. So here's what it is. And uh, this is from, what was it, 2021? This was something she reposted yes. on her Instagram story in 2021. Uh, and if you zoom in, you can uh, see the statement to, there. Yeah. So it says, Jews were beaten in the streets, not by Nazi soldiers, but by their neighbors, even by children. Because history is edited, most people today don't realize that to get to a point where Nazi soldiers could easily round up thousands of Jews, the government first made their own neighbors hate them simply for being Jews. How is that any different from hating someone for their political views? You'll notice that she doesn't mention political parties of current year at all, nor does she mention, uh, you know, inherently anything about conservatives specifically. Well, they would just say it's a dog whistle, so it doesn't really matter what it does or doesn't mention by name. And they did take particular notice of the word thousands. They said Nazis rounded up thousands of Jews instead of the word millions. So they're trying to say that because of that, she is trivializing the Holocaust and therefore Gina Carano, in their mind, is a Holocaust revisionist. I would argue that this post from Pedro Pascal trivializes just as much from yes. 2018 which uh, shows uh, Jews in uh, camps as well as people at the border in cages, Kids in as cages. they called it in 2018. It was, funnily enough, called something very different when Obama was in office and then completely ignored <laughs> when Biden entered, the op- entered office. But I'm sure that's just by accident. Right. What do I know? Disney argues that Gina Carano's lawsuit should be thrown out. Mm -hmm. Um, They're saying that Gina Carano's lawsuit should be thrown out on the grounds that Disney has a constitutional right not to associate its artistic expression with Carano's speech, such that the First Amendment provides a complete defense to Carano's claims, claiming her words were consistently twisted to demonize and dehumanize as an alt-right wing extremist during the very public dispute three years ago. Gina Carano took Disney to court in early February to get back her high-profile Mandalorian role of Cara Dune. Obviously, that's not going to happen, but I think that we said when this lawsuit initially was filed, it's not about the money. It's not even necessarily about the outcome. It's about proving a point. It's mm-hmm. like when Johnny Depp sued Amber Heard because it's the not because to... he needs the money or whatever, or not because he's trying to gold dig, but it's in order to he prove the to the away. public that he was unfairly maligned, right? Correct. So here's Disney's full filing. Carano's social media usage sunk to its nadir on February 10th, 2021. On that day, she reposted an Instagram post from user Warrior Priest Jim Podcast. The post read, as you said before, Disney had enough. The same day Carano grotesquely trivialized the Holocaust as comparable to sharp political disagreements, Lucasfilm announced that Gina Carano is, quote, not currently employed by Lucasfilm and there are no plans for her to be in the future. Nevertheless, her social media posts denigrating people based on their cultural and religious identities are abhorrent and unacceptable. A month later, Disney's former CEO, Bob Chapek, explained that Gina Carano's views, quote, didn't align with company values, including values of respect, decency, integrity, and inclusion. So 
basically they're saying without saying it that Pedro Pascal's extreme leftist views do align with company values. Mm -hmm. They're not really trying to hide the fact that they have a political bias. But as a private institution, they're legally allowed to. Yes. And I feel like the question here is, like the question for the, the court obviously is, was it illegal for Disney to do what they did? Like to fire her? Because it's not even a lawsuit over libel or slander. It's about wrongful termination. And honestly, I have no idea if what they did in firing her was illegal, but it was morally wrong. Right. Hmm. And a lot of people also blame Gina Carano for what happened to her, saying you were working for Disney. You should have known what type of company you were dealing with no, at the time no, and no. known what you were getting into. But I think that her being so outspoken with these political beliefs of hers is proof enough that she had no idea what she was getting into and had no idea what kind of backlash she was about to face. Or at the very least, the fact that she was so surprised when yeah. it did happen. Yeah, like yeah. I don't, maybe a lot of people aren't as plugged into the culture war as we are. And maybe she really had no idea that mm -hmm. the backlash would be as swift and as harsh and ruthless. If that's true, I envy her at that time. Yeah. <laughs> what really happened, and I'm guessing, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. There's two factions in the Star Wars development world. There's the John Favreau people and there's the Kathleen Kennedy mm -hmm. people. Anyone that was close to John Favreau uh, basically was told to shut up and sit down and Kathleen Kennedy is going to take over. Carano and Favreau were very close. They were working very closely. They were, weren't they developing a Cara Dune series? Yeah, there was going to be yeah. a spin-off yeah. series. So Kathleen Kennedy needed her out of the picture no matter what the scenario, like she had to just find some excuse to get rid of Carano. I'm guessing, but I'm pretty sure this is the fact. Kennedy is a snake, a viper. She'll backstab anyone. She'll, she's a climber. She'll cut down anyone. And what's ironic is she's the most incompetent. Like, how do you ruin Star Wars? But she did it. Which is crazy because she's also considered one of the most successful producers of she, all time. She was boosted, yeah. man. There's no Long chance. Long before she was in charge. She was, yeah. Somebody's intern is like, oh, I'm going to be nice. I'm going to get you the coffee, whatever. She's like, oh, yeah, Kathleen Kennedy. She seemed to have been talented when she was younger. I don't buy it. But as she's proven with Lucasfilm, you can't ruin Indiana Jones and Star Wars unless you're actually incompetent or you want to ruin it on purpose or she's trying to hijack it, really. Um, but Carano, being a s actual strong female, it's like, I can't have another woman taking over the series. She, Kathleen Kennedy needs to be the only woman. She needs to have underling women that will serve her, but not someone who's going to be strong enough to overshadow her at some point. So Carano was kicked out because she was going to overshadow Kennedy for sure. Her and hmm. Favreau were going to take over Star Wars. That's a fact. I'm, I would argue that's a fact. And Kennedy needed Carano out of the picture. They used this as an excuse. So many people get canceled for such stupid reasons. Kennedy was waiting for an opportunity and they pretended like a dog that just doesn't let go. I'm going to bite you and I'm not going to let go. You're fired. That's was, an interesting read on it. There was a actually. thing. I haven't I'm heard that sure before. of it. I'm sure of it. Uh, I was just curious. So, so uh, this is just the first thing that comes up on Google from Blackstone Law. Workers are protected from discrimination based on their political beliefs in California. Well, there you go. I, <laughs> like that was like that was literally like a single second Google search. Gina I don't Carano know how um, has also issued a response to this headline from their file to dismiss. She said, Disney has confirmed what has been known all along. They will fire you if you say something they disagree with, even if they have to misrepresent, malign, and mischaracterize you to do it. They're now on record letting everyone who works for them know that Disney will take any chance they get to control what you say, what you think, or they will attempt to destroy your career. Glad we cleared that up. The First Amendment does not allow Disney to wantonly discriminate which is what they've done in my case, and frankly, have now admitted they did. If you ever want to know what today's Disney values are, they just told you. I mean, how many times when, in production, the production world, when you sign on to work with a company like Disney, you have to sign an NDA? Not only that, but it's like, I'm not gonna tweet certain things. They wanna control everything about you because you are their brand. You're, you're a mascot mm -hmm. for them. Not only are you Cara Dune, you're also 
we want to own Gina Carano, the person. Well, we talk a lot about actors who say dumb stuff about politics and how it does adversely affect, possibly adversely affect their ability to get people to come to the theaters. Right now, we talked about, so there was all these threads going around about Alan Richson talking about what's going, you know, his views on Trump, his views on the Catholic Church. Reacher? Uh, Reacher, right? Yeah. Okay, so like the point being that if he's allowed to say that, like I have no problem with them stop if they want to say don't tweet about politics, fine, but it should be evenly enforced amongst all beliefs. That's not the reality of the world we live in. That's no. just never going to be the case, especially in an industry as uh, incestuous and single-minded as Hollywood is. Any company, like even in the gaming industry, if you're conservative, you're expected to stay quiet about it. If you're a leftist, you are encouraged to say it as loud as possible. We will celebrate you. We'll have flag days at our company and everything. But a lot of like programmer types of guys, like say at the old gaming companies, were center right leaning, mm -hmm. but they were never allowed to talk about it. Which is sad because that makes, you know, a lot of times when something bad happens socially in the, in the culture, then you're expected to speak and then the silence is violence crowd comes out, which is even more insidious yeah. when you're already expected to just keep your mouth shut if you see, if you believe in something that's even a little bit different than whatever the current thing is, but then to then be forced to speak against your beliefs by saying that you're not even allowed to just do that, you have to also speak up when we tell you. That's to. the struggle session psychology. Like we, oh, you're not a conservative, are you? I can't believe that. You better say something about this right sure. now. So you just think Kathleen Kennedy is a mean girl? It has been well documented that she is. She cannot tolerate anyone upstaging her. And Favreau was famously going to take over Star Wars for many years. Like Mandalorian kicked so much ass. Uh, he was heading some really good projects and he was doing really good work. Kendi, everything she put out was a dud. And word on the street is behind the scenes, Favreau was going to take her place as the creative lead of Star Wars. I don't know about all of Lucasfilm, but she wasn't going to have that. And so Favreau basically has been put on the naughty bench, hasn't been doing much as far as I know. The naughty going, bench, huh? But yeah, like he's been taken off of Star Wars and he's doing like Lion King 2 or something. I don't yeah. know what he's doing. Oh, the Mufasa movie. Oh. The Mufasa prequel everyone wants, yeah. Okay, uh, but, that's a problem, okay? Nobody watched Simba's Pride or whatever that anime, that straight to DVD one yeah, was. Mufasa's yeah. Revenge or something. But like everyone knows, any Star Wars fan knows, the best Star Wars con content was Favreau. And now I would say a little bit of Rogue One was pretty good. Yeah. But that's probably where Kennedy had the least influence. And the ones where she had the most influence are the worst ones. Mm -hmm. uh, Someone commented when we initially covered this saying that Jon Favreau offered to give Gina Carano her role in Mandalorian back if she throughout her lawsuit. That would, ne imagine That's, the toxic ass work environment when she just comes strutting back into work. No, that does not sound believable at all. I'm sure mm -hmm. that he likes her, but. I don't know if he's that calculating type that would do that. I don't know. Yeah. But maybe it was like, you'll make so much money anyway from, but again, well, Kennedy wouldn't allow it. Now that they've canned Gina Carano, they can't go back on it. There's no way. I don't know if he would have the authority to hire yeah. someone. Yeah, that sounds fake. I love the idea. Okay, so like <laughs> Kathleen Kennedy comes walking into the break room and Gina Carano's just there drinking her coffee and yeah. Hey girl. <laughs> <laughs> you know how it is with women, right? Yeah. Like they do war differently than men. Mm -hmm. The the passive aggressiveness, mm -hmm. pretending Which to be is friends. Yeah, no, the way that Gina Carano described first meeting Kathleen Kennedy was crazy. Ice. Right? Where she she said that Kathleen Kennedy was wearing this chemical peel on her face that was making her skin peel off and she was all red and disgusting looking and she was just acting like a, like a girl boss the whole time that they were in the meeting mm -hmm. but ultimately she gave Gina Carano the job mm -hmm. but it was like a mutual respect thing where it's like like I know you're powerful you know I'm powerful we're gonna coexist but it seemed like that was always very tenuous Well, in the business world if you're the kathleen kennedy type you need to have everybody either be under you or get rid of them mm -hmm. you can't have some successor coming up yeah you got to be see. very careful about your number two no Otherwise, among men you know. I, I don't know if men uh, men do it differently but it's not dissimilar where if somebody's coming up and their name is better than yours yeah you got to either get them under your control or bob Iger. 
Bob Iger would be a good example of that. He's already yeah. There's who already did he talk? Pass, there's already he, he when it was Chapek afterwards who came from the park who took the fall and took the fall for all the stuff that happened post COVID, right? Yes. So and he's and they're already talking. One of the big things that was coming up during the whole discussion about getting Nelson Peltz and Jay Rasulo on the board was the talk about succession for him when he leaves supposedly in 2026 mm -hmm. and. Once you get to that level, right, when you're the CEO of a Fortune 500 company or the CEO of something that does the business that a Disney does, or in this case, Lucasfilm, which used to be so much more sought after when Star Wars was a bigger thing, you really do have to have an enormous ego and you do have to have uh, a lot of uh, paranoia to well, stay on top. Men socially acknowledge there is a hierarchy. Um, ladies are, correct me if I'm wrong, they're just more about community. But it's funny that a Kathleen Kennedy says, I am the top lady here. Women have you. social hierarchy. Like there's the mean girls thing. There is an alpha female yeah. in, in these cases. Um, I don't know. Uh, in, in the case of Star Wars, though, Kennedy has to be, uh, she's the CEO, was the CEO? She, she still is. Yeah, she's still in charge of Lucasfilm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I just don't have high hopes for the outcome of this lawsuit, even though she, I do believe she's morally justified in what she's doing. Mm -hmm. Think about the odds, because I, I looked into this judge, Sherilyn Peace Garnett, it, and she's, look, she's a Biden appointed judge in California. L.A., OK, yeah. like what are the odds that this woman is going to come at this truly in a neutral way? and not with a politically charged perspective. But this is the Quite same. low. Is this the lawsuit with uh, Musk? Yes. Yes. So it's possible because he said Iger, he wants to just give him a black eye, right? He, it doesn't even matter if they win. Mm -hmm. He just wants to damage Disney. And, and their reputation. Right. Yeah. The lawsuit will give, give people like us like so many opportunities to make fun of Disney, right. to crap on Disney, to ruin their stock price and all that stuff. Right. So maybe Musk's plan really is just to get back at them. Right. Because what was yeah. the initial thing with Musk? Because just... they pulled advertising from X. Right. And it was the, the famous uh, go fuck yourself. Yes. Yep. Like, so I'm sure Carano's in the same boat. Go F yourself, Kennedy, Iger, whatever, for screwing. Even though she's like the nicest person ever. She is. <laughs> they right. pushed her to this point. There is point. nobody that's ever like met her that's ever had a bad thing to say about yeah. her. Yeah. She seems like an absolute sweetheart. But Kennedy, I'm sure if you're in the room with her, you could tell instantly she's a snake. There's just people that give off yeah, energy yeah. like that. And uh, especially like when you think about Hollywood, which is an industry where it's all about getting ahead and it's all about working your way up. Not talent. And not talent. Amazingly. Especially, well, especially for something like The Boardroom, they would list all the movies that Kathleen Kennedy uh, is famous for, all the things that she was successful doing, but all of the ones that actually made money were all before she was appointed head of Lucasfilm. It's all from when George was still around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She and, was yeah. maybe an assistant to them. Yeah. She was there when it happened. And at the end of the day, for most of us, it doesn't matter because Disney's brand is so damaged that it's not like any of us associate Disney with anything positive anymore anyways. I doubt the investors even care about the content. They just want a return on their investments. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, they, they, were, they were certainly able to. So when they did all their marketing, they did like a marketing push to keep out Pelts and Rasulo. So like... They should be looking at their stock price and looking at how much money these movies are making and say, look, I understand that these films are subsidized by the parks, that that's where you make your money. But Got a $20 yeah. from Broken Buddha. He said, tomorrow in all capitals around the U.S., Christians are asking for a million families to show to take a stand for our children against all the things the government is pushing from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. So do I have to like literally stand I didn't from hear 1 to about 3? This. I can do that. Yeah. I can do that. I, well, I mean, you're not a family. You're just a guy, but... I can still stand. You can still come and... Fine, I won't help. To screw you guys. You have do a family, some. though. So. I do have family. <laughs> Everyone does. But, like, like nothing's going to change. And because, I like, the board, they kept Iger in charge. They did not add Pelts or Rasulo. Nothing's going to be done any differently. They're going to they're gonna tout a bunch of projects that aren't going to really do all that great. Is Moana 2 really going to be their big this return? This is it, guys. Moana 2. <laughs> I don't think so. Oh, the most annoying thing, since we're on the topic of Disney and MCU is technically Disney. Um, I guess not technically. There was this post the other day where like Kevin Feige was talking about <laughs> Deadpool and Wolverine and he says the F word and I kid you not the article says Kevin Feige drops the F bomb while talking about Deadpool versus Wolverine and I'm like 
And then did he stay out past curfew and sneak a wine cooler from the fridge? What are you talking about? Incredible. You dork. Throw it. Somebody push him into a locker. <laughs> like, what is this shit? <laughs> like, how can this company misstep this often? Thank you, guys. So that's, that's worse. That's as bad as JoJo Siwa talking about dropping the F-bomb. Okay, let's read Super Chats. Andrew Jacobs said, Happy birthday to Shannon Doherty, the first celebrity I'm aware of who had the guts to be an outspoken conservative in Hollyweird, Heathers and Dino 210. Happy I birthday. wasn't aware of that. Uh, I always think of like um, Kevin Sorbo and Angie Harmon was an open conservative back in the day. Stacey Dash, uh, post True. Obama, True. was a conservative. I guess they're talking about times before that, mm. right? And, and I guess like there would have been a time, 90210 years, for instance, where being in a liberal or a conservative wouldn't have been the same discussion that it is now yeah. in Hollywood. Lower stakes. Because the f people funding it were likely the, <laughs> the conservatives back in the day. Hmm. Kyle Dixon, oh no, we read that one. Shane H. Wilder said, happy Friday, Brett, Mary, and George. Mary, the lupus you requested is up. Not my best work, but I aim to please. Two weeks till 600. We're getting there. That's crazy. I also watched, um, so I've been rewatching old episodes of the show Las Vegas, and there's like Dean Kane has like an eight episode arc as like a billionaire who's like the ex husband of one of the women on the show, and it's just funny watching him. The show is like. Basically like dad TV, but in the early 2000s, even dad TV would, could be degenerate, which I appreciate. And, uh, you know, conservative Dean Cain. Maybe his views have changed. Maybe he wasn't conservative back then. I don't know. But uh, it's fun. Good stuff. Shane H. Wilder said Brett in the chat saying he's a normie. You're I, ab normie. I'm a normie. I'm a, oh, no. I've, I've, I forgot. I've abandoned that term. I'm a tourist, not a normie. Okay. Hmm. You, you can't be a normie and, and, do, and spend as much time on the internet as we have to, yeah. to do the show. But I am a tourist. Glad you can admit that. Yes. First, last said, started watching Weeds last night. You're right, they've been subverting, subverting the culture forever. Dexter, on the other hand, promoting conservative values. Dexter? How, how would you uh, describe that? In like, I, I would love to hear the, hmm. I, I love watching old like retrospectives of TV shows and movies. I would love to hear the Dexter argument. The conservative like, case for Dexter. Just, just oh, I, I guess it's just, just if something bad, like, can I even say that on there? It's like, if somebody does something bad, just off them. <laughs> that was saying. a joke. Yeah, it was, uh, I'm not actually advocating for that, but you get what I'm saying. Corey Anderson said, J.K. Rowling, the richest shit poster ever. With it, let's, let's stop. Is she in. or is that Elon? Wait, who is richer, J.K. Rowling or Elon? Elon. 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 Is that by a lot? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But let's, she's pretty close. She's right. Like oh, she'd be like. I don't know. I don't know if she's Elon. Like she's pretty close in terms of shit posters, right? Yes. I mean, but the problem is she doesn't have a lot of variety with her shit posting. She's a pretty one note shit poster. Yeah. She's she like, needs to diversify so her portfolio yeah. for sure. Like I would love for her to find just another. You know what she should do? She should find an issue that doesn't affect her. Like she should get really, <laughs> she should become really pro gun just out of nowhere because she's <laughs> from the UK. And she, she, <laughs> she like gets a really rare hunting rifle like, that's should, allowed like, in I want her to have a, it's like a British flag. It says like these colors don't run. <laughs> I've been saying she should buy Scotland the way that uh, Elon bought X. There you go. She could just do that. Run it. Yeah. What about Greece? She would have she bought Greece. <laughs> she could buy Greece for like twenty bucks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk about JK Rowling. Yeah, JK Rowling recently came out and said that she would not accept an apology from the Harry Potter stars if they gave her one. Specifically Daniel Radcliffe and Emma Watson. J.K. Rowling says she wouldn't forgive them for their trans stance, specifically the way that they threw her under the bus for being critical of this issue. Um, for some context, though, this is because J.K. Rowling was speaking out about the recent Cass review. It's a review that was written by Dr. Hillary Cass, and it conducted, she said, the most robust review of the medical evidence for transitioning children that's ever been conducted. Mere hours after it was released to the press and public, committed ideologues are doubling down. Um, so basically, the findings from this are that gender services, quote unquote, are remarkably weak. Um, they're based on remarkably weak evidence and that children have been, quote, let down by medical professionals in specifically the UK. 
The reality is we have no good evidence on the long-term outcomes of interventions such as puberty blockers to manage gender-related distress, says Dr. Hillary, Hillary Cass. It's unusual for us to give a potentially life-changing treatment to young people and not know what happens to them in adulthood. Absolutely radical and bigoted language um, here. So someone replied to J.K. Rowling and said, just waiting for Daniel Radcliffe and Emma Watson to give you a very public apology, safe in the knowledge that you will forgive them. But J.K. Rowling responded to this person and said, not safe, I'm afraid. Celebs who cozied up to a movement intent on eroding women's hard won rights and who used their platforms to cheer on the transitioning of minors can save their apologies for traumatized detransitioners and vulnerable women reliant on single, spe single sex spaces. Um, so this is causing a lot of backlash because obviously Daniel Radcliffe, he's associated with the Trevor Project. Right. Emma Watson has also been super outspoken about like trans rights and virtue signaling in that regard. And Rupert Grint just bought an ice cream truck and... It's weird because I, I think like most of the Harry Potter cast at this point has been compelled to make a statement. Yeah. A Most lot of, of the them. older actors were, were just said she's allowed to. The older actors set the precedent to what it should have been, right? Except like, for the one who played Draco Malfoy, right? No, even, even That he, guy came out in support of her, right? Yeah, but, but in general, most of them said, like, look, she's entitled to her opinion yeah. and then would either obfuscate what they thought or said, I disagree with her, but what culture do we want to live in where nobody's allowed to have their opinions? And the older actors, you could make the argument that the older actors, actors felt less pressure. They're farther along in their careers. Perhaps they made more money but do the harry potter young do the young harry potter actors really need Bro, to you make did any harry more potter money? you're, set for life, you're fine right <laughs> so for them it really was more about the social pressure yeah but i do it did make me wonder like what do you think the response would be if someone like daniel radcliffe or emma watson apologized for throwing jk rowling under the bus response from her what would be the response from the general public i guess like Worse now, rather than if they'd done it earlier on, they've waited too long. It would be a huge story mm -hmm. if either of them did that. Well, now. the left would jump on them and say, yeah. oh, so you support being able to say things that are essentially violence. But I do wonder how would the movement that generally agrees with J.K. Rowling on this issue, how would they respond? Like, is it valid to basically say you know you were you were on the wrong side from the beginning therefore we don't accept you now like, depends if they're sincere but it, all they're saying is she can say whatever she wants and they still hold their position because i would then say all right we'll screw you anyway <laughs> how would it be from jk the people on jk rowling side well, i think that i'm i'm noticing like i looked up more about what's going on in the conversation about this cast review mm. And a lot of people who have been dogmatically pro-trans and not just that, but pro-child transitioning interventions, they're sort of backing away from their previous claims and acting like they were lukewarm, you know, radical centrists on the issue the whole time Funny and gaslighting works. everybody now that the experts are starting to question their own motives. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if someone like these public figures in the entertainment industry did the same thing, would they get grace? Because mm -hmm. well, they would be like, I didn't know at the time. Like, I was ignorant. Yeah, their, their position is because uh, they're acting compassionate. They think mm -hmm. it's the compassionate thing to do to allow kids to castrate themselves. They don't see it that way. It's, I'm going to hurt myself if I don't castrate myself. Therefore, let's pick the lesser of two evils. That's why psychologists will say, would you rather have a trans child or a blank child? You know yeah. what I mean? It's like a psychological trick that they do on parents. But for her, she's very much about women's rights. She always has been. And now it's when, say, like the stories about the locker rooms. You got a, a trans person in the women's locker room. Is this person a creep or not? Let's err on the side of caution and not let them into the women's locker room. Or women's sports, where women are working really hard. An athlete works 10, 15 years to be like a great athlete. And then here comes this mid-male athlete who says he's a woman. And we're going to let him just take the gold from the women. Yeah. Uh, J.K. Rowling, being a feminist first, would side with the ladies she's yeah. not necessarily on quote our side I'm no not. she's ideologically she consistent very, to, her, yeah. to her own beliefs she, yeah true she's being as 
intellectually honest as she can be from the flawed perspective that she has as a quite radical feminist. She has a very safe stance on it too, because she says like, I'm perfectly willing to ally myself with trans people who are generally on the side of like opposing the flagrant excesses of this ideology, right? Well, she's but instead of just criticizing it from the point of view that, you know, it's ridiculous to think that someone can change their sex. All right, so she's definitely against the child thing. Yeah. Uh, like kids hurting themselves irreparably. And then anything that hurts biological women. Yeah, say sports or whatever, uh, female achievement, that sort of thing. Prisons. Guys. Correct. Uh, yeah, I remember that was the uh, initial. Group, um, like homes for like battered women shelters and like things she's, like that. She started her own yeah, shelter. Yeah, started her own shelter women. for right. that. Mm -hmm. So she's. She's fairly consistent. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So it's not like she's now suddenly far right. Now in Scotland, the whole government and all their entertainment is like super left leaning anyway. So now she's being considered or no, she wrote as Robert Galbraith. One of her recent detective books yeah, the wasn't the villain trans or something yeah 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 <laughs> i didn't get to that book yet but yeah i remember she caught a lot of flack for that one and now this is like it was a about continuation. like a writer like it looked like a self-insert yes um yeah it'd be funny if she rewrote harry potter and made all of the quidditch players men <laughs> well i have a slight theory where like she not she didn't initiate all this trans stuff but like if remember, riley Gaines had magic on her side then everything would be fine yeah, if, <laughs> if she had taken polyjuice potion yeah right you turn into yeah. a lady yeah. but that's what i i think uh, that and avatar i think kicked off this whole trans stuff trans, Do you remember it was not a thing avatar trans, uh, you remember uh, i think avatar was 2008 ish well there's also like uh out? you know you like, mean the blue people right yeah you could change your body you think that it sort of it put fuel on the, the fire because before the trans movement was a huge thing correct me if my, i'm wrong with my dates when did avatar 2 come out uh, avatar one, 1 2009 9 yeah. so i remember everybody was talking about trans stuff and all that right after the crash so 2008 oh. 9 avatar comes out with this idea of you can change your body and it popularized it it was already there but the idea of i want to uh, my soul is different from how I'm presenting myself. It, what if I could change, if I could project my body into another body and look like my real self, like I look on the inside? I remember, now I'm getting into nerd territory, but Matrix 1 had a character named Switch. Yep. Uh, they ori originally wrote this character to be trans, so it's a woman in the Matrix, but when they come out of the Matrix, it's a man. Mm. So my internal self is a woman, therefore, in the Matrix, I'm a woman. So they've been trying to push the idea, but it never caught fire. I might theorize, I don't, I don't have proof, but maybe around the time of when, coincidence, 2008-ish, 9-ish. Yeah. One could also say it was an op to get people's minds off of the uh, housing crisis slash crash yes. thing. Yes, I love all the memes. It's like me being stuck, me being in third grade when I should have been buying a house in 2008. Right. Was the character switch and self insert for the Wachowski? Wachowski they hadn't trans uh, that transitioned was, yet. But so, that's an interesting yeah. point, Sisters, right? Yes, because whatever. they had been thinking about that for a long time. Huh. They had been, they were the Wachowski brothers at that time. Yeah, yeah the first one. I think they started transitioning. Theory. They Magic. vanished. They were not in any of the special features in movies two and three. They had started transitioning. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they fully transitioned, but by the time they did like Speed Racer, I want to say. Imagine like everybody who hates J.K. Rowling that loves Harry Potter. Every time they read about transfiguration, they're just like, Ugh! I hate that word now. Well, you remember when, uh, I don't know if you're a Harry Potter nerd, uh, when she said that Dumbledore was gay, mm -hmm. there was that massive like, People were burning books and stuff. I think it was around the time seven, book seven came out. She was doing a signing. A girl asked him, asked her, was Dumbledore ever in love? And then she said Dumbledore was gay and everyone flipped. Yeah. So what was that? What year was I mean, that? It was kind of cringe and unnecessary and then everybody when she did came, that, It like... became more, it became less about that and became more about the fact that it wasn't actually written in the books and it became a bunch of revisionist history that wasn't That's actually. That's what some people say. Yeah. She can kind of just say that about. Yes. any character she yeah. wrote she could say every character in harry potter was gay you just didn't know it they so, were in the closet <laughs> yeah before that i had never heard anything about her and the uh culture being involved in culture war stuff like that mm -hmm. uh having to do she with. she started out on the wrong side but yeah. maybe she was always like that mm. like i don't see anything wrong with having a gay dumbledore let's say but you have to have put more hints 
It can't just be that he's flamboyant sometimes. Then again, he did invite Harry to his room a lot. There was a lot, you know, they spent a lot of time alone. That wasn't healthy. There was that scene. (laughs) I can't do this joke. (laughs) I'm not going to do that joke. No, no, tell it. No, no, no. Go ahead, go ahead. I mean, that's not what Dumbledore should be be yelled at for. It's the fact that he continually sent Harry home to an abusive family every summer. You know, Uh, all because he didn't want him to get an ego. He's like, oh, so so as to not give you an ego, I'm going to send you home to your hateful and dismissive relatives (laughs) rather than having you adopted by like any number of thousands of wizarding families that would gladly take you in. His the magic that Harry's mom put on him required him to go home, if I recall. Well, yes, as according to book seven. Yeah, the um, uh, what she did with his because they're related. The magic of love. Yes. You know the funniest comeback that these people say to J.K. Rowling is that you look trans. As they're trying to advocate for trans people, they use the word trans as an insult for a biological woman. It's like that Lizzo thing where if you walk up to a woman and say you look like Lizzo, they get insulted. Exactly. (laughs) You look trans. You say that to a woman, they'll get insulted. But that means you're beautiful. That you're stunning. It means you're stunning and brave. Obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a Lizzo in Harry Potter that they could call uh, someone like? Hermione. There's a Lizzo in Rings of Power. Yes, there, there is. Okay, let's go to yep. Super Chats. Sovereign Citizen said, I'm traveling. Yeah. Okay, well, safe they, travels. Safe Corey travels Anderson there. said, how would one... Okay, I'm not going to say that. Shane H. Wilder said, the someone who sent the let's go would be me. You know I can't let you live that down. I've memed it to heck. As you should. Live it down. I mean, that was, my, that was the highlight of my career. Are you yeah, kidding actually, me? Actually, yeah. Yeah. Corey Anderson said the TMNT movie better have Corey Feldman in it. It better have Sam Rockwell in it, who was in the original 1990 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. The The ninja from Pop Culture Planet said, hello, Earthlings. David Cross is the monk's manager. By the way, Spock is a space ninja. Change my mind. Also, Dread is a solid film. If you're talking the 2012 Dread, yes. Yes, it is. And everyone should watch that movie. I saw part of it. Under two hours. Any movie that gets, it's like, it's like an hour and 47 minutes. I saw that. And I'm like, let's freaking go. Wasn't it independently funded too? Yes, it was. Or uh, it's, um, maybe I'll look it up here. What, what does, I wonder how much Carl <clears throat> Urban got paid to do that movie. Um, yeah. Corey Anderson said Florence ugly boobs pew can be Marla Maples. There you go. Hey, that's not fair. Like Marla Maples was kind of bad. <laughs> Well, let's, uh, let's do one day. more and then we'll come back to finish up. He also said Billy D. Williams or Cat Williams as Trump. Yes! Billy uh, D. Williams would totally B- do Billy it. Billy D. Williams would be a, he's a little, he's a little, he could play old Trump. <laughs> Tophone Man mm-hmm. said, Mary had a little lamb. What happened to it? Did she treat it like a shopping cart? LMAO. Don't do that. Oh, so yesterday, uh, whenever I was at the store last, I saw just a car get, it, like I came out and the car just had a, a cart just stuck in the, the wind door. has been crazy lately oh i felt bad for them yeah i felt bad for them i did, but then i didn't want to go and like remove it because i didn't want it to seem like i like <laughs> let my cart go and you didn't want to be the culprit i didn't want to be you know they say like sometimes somebody really does just get found standing over a dead body <laughs> i didn't want to be the guy who's like hey what are you doing next to my car did you just hit me with your with your cart it's not gonna be me uh-huh. so it's not gonna be me. all right let's hold off and let's come back after right. uh, after the fact let's talk about you and what's going on with you Oh, the what least projects interesting. are in the works? Yeah. Uh, well, bless you guys for asking. I'm just finishing up illustrating a book called Ghost of the Badlands, which I have a hardcover edition here, written by the very talented Razor uh, over Fist. Over to the, to the right, uh, to your left. Yeah, that way. Yep, perfect. Beautiful. This is the hardcover, 160-something pages. I was going to ask how, because I, I was looking through it last night, and it's dense. The it's edition, uh, yeah, that's the soft cover edition. I think it's 120-ish pages. Uh, I've been working on it for 11 months, something like that. Um, I still remember when the initial funding for that project started. Yeah, we that was the last the April, May, got funded in May. I went to Arizona in June, and then I started full-time production when I got back in late June. So it's been, what, it's April now, 10 months, let's say. I'm coloring the book now, so there will be a colorized edition. Uh, How did you guys connect to start working on that? Uh, I had worked with Razor on Death Mask, uh, his second prose novel. I did illustrations for him. So I had been a fan of his for many years. On You know, he does his rants on YouTube, if you guys are familiar. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Love him. Huge fan. And uh, so I saw he followed me on Twitter. And out of nowhere, I'm just like, I DM'd him. And I said, hey, man, love your stuff. If you ever want to work with me, let me know. 
Uh, so I illustrated uh, a bunch of illustrations for Death Mask, and then I was looking to do my next project about a year ago. I just finished a children's story called Goofberry Pie. There's a copy somewhere in this house. Um, and I want to do more of those, which is published through Polka Dot Shop, by the way. Uh, if anyone wants linked it. below. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we've sold out of Goofberry Pie, but we will do another edition when I do the next book, hopefully later this year. Uh, what was I saying? So how did I start Goofberry? No, Ghost of the Badlands. We, I was looking for my next project. I DM'd him. I was thinking about doing a Western. He mentioned he had written a Western. I know he's talked in his videos. Yeah. It's a genre that he feels is underserved nowadays. Yeah. So I, since I was looking for my next project, I'm like, uh, do you have any, are you, do you have anyone that you're working with for illustrating? Yada, yada. I said, let's do an Indiegogo campaign. Um, and it did really well. So I'm finishing the books now. We're printing. The prints are coming in now and I'm going to be distributing them in the next month or two. Uh, so yeah, we'll be finishing up next month, I think, I hope, and uh, we'll see what happens after. And uh, so the, how long does the coloring process take with, after how long it took to do everything else? For me, thankfully, coloring is super easy. Okay. Um, so it's gonna take maybe a month. Uh, I've been kind of splatting colors down. Inking to took the most amount of time. I'm a very slow inker. Uh, and also it's the, the, the style is very, yeah. very dense with the inking. We wanted to do an old style. Like I have old newspapers from the 1890s. Uh, I bought in an antique shop. They used to, instead of photographs, they would do handmade illustrations. So, and also I love manga. So we wanted to do an old manga looking style uh, that would have that would have been in a newspaper in the 1800s, something like that. And even the, the paper has a yellowish tint to it. Yes. We yeah. intentionally wanted to do an aged look. Uh, even in the back, there's like a short story that he wrote. Uh, I formatted it to look like old newspapers that you would have found. Let's see if I could put it up here. Well, long story short, the idea was we wanted to make it look like an old actual newspaper yeah that's cool yeah but so we have his illustrations actually in there so it looks like something you would have found in a harper's or art journal something like that but the you know it's in this case the book took a long time but uh it's been on my heart for a long time like we always talk smack on podcasts and stuff about how we need to win culture back that's something we didn't talk about today but i, I it's well, always on my heart we could get into we, that yeah we, sure yeah. if you want to well yeah. you 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 know, think it's really uh, lost on conservatives why culture is important, why a lot of things in pop culture are important. And I noticed that uh, earlier this year you were getting into a little bit of a back and forth with Matt Walsh yeah. about specifically video games and anime. And this was also right in the beginning of Gamergate 2.0 kind of popping off. Ish, yeah. And uh, I... Let's just go back to the source material, shall we? Matt Walsh, back in 2018, tweeted the following. Video games are a sacred cow because our country is filled with adults who are obsessed with them. That's why we all pretend insanely that there's nothing wrong with or disturbing about a child spending all day killing people in a virtual world. You responded saying... Video games are a medium, <laughs> not a genre, you bearded puritanical oh, philistine. Okay. If your child is only playing games where he's murdering people, get educated and buy him Minecraft, Rocket League, Mario Maker, better yet, play games together and bond. Debate me, Matt. I was mad at that time, <laughs> I'm sorry. And you said this came up because you saw his silly comments dismissing anime his comments about anime were also quite inflammatory. Yeah, uh, we have the we have the clip here. He still. says that anime is satanic. Uh, Let's see. Let's see his take. I'm gonna um, start yelling. <laughs> what's your opinion on anime? It's really popular amongst teens and young adults. I think it's all satanic. I have no argument for it. I have no <laughs> argument for why it's satanic. It just seems that way to me. All anime to me seems weird, just like bizarre, creepy. But he doesn't watch it. Um, and. <laughs> In general, I don't think that adults should be, whether it's anime or any other kind of cartoon, uh, with, with, with rare exception, adults really should be watching cartoons in general, I would say. I gave him a list, and anyone who is interested, and of course he's not going to platform this, me this and listen sarcasm, to what I have to say. Right? It's sarcasm. He's, when he says, he's, I don't have recognize this is pretty tongue-in-cheek. When, I mean, when he says, I don't have an argument, I take this as a joke. 
right? But let's, okay. He followed but, it up with a bunch of tweets. Like he said, the girl from The Exorcist used anime. And the next thing you know, she's crawling around upside down on the ceiling. He said, 74% of all serial killers have an anime habit. Hitler was also into anime, reports <laughs> suggest. He, I understand. He said, joke. I want to apologize for singling out anime. I actually think all cartoons are satanic. And he goes on and on and on. So, and video games and comics, he, which is he, all things that I do professionally. Yes, yes. So being a conservatoid myself, let's say middle of the road, Overton window shifted, and now I'm conservative. Fine. I've spent my whole life learning to draw and studying film and playing video games. I'm an adult who plays video games. I'm not a freaking man child. <laughs> I can actually point him to games that are beautiful and artistic. And they're always talking about, and this is the root of it. It's not, uh, he could say whatever he wants and I can disagree with him, nobody cares. But when he talks about we're losing the culture where we need to take culture back, that doesn't mean we should stop the left from making movies and comics and video games. What I would argue is we need to boost our side and make comics like say Ghost of the Badlands, right here. We need to make things and make better things than our opponents so that the 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 normies the the public will prefer our stuff you got the lord of the rings which is like the best example yes. of a conservative story that still has lasted many generations we need to make culture to win the culture war we can't just abandon the hills and get pissed off when the left takes over every th tower that we're abandoning so i get super mad at the matt walsh type i'm fixating on him because he's you know fairly outspoken but like the idea that it's demonic, whatever, maybe he's being hyperbolic. I understand this is the internet. We have to get clicks. But I gave him a list of five anime to watch. Not that, you know, he's not obligated to listen to me. I think it was Spirited Away, Akira, L Ghost in the Shell, Cowboy Bebop the movie, Porco Rosso. There was another one. Uh, but there was a, no, and Jinro, the Wolf Brigade. I'm looking right into the camera. Jinro, the Wolf Brigade is the most anti-left movie you could possibly imagine. He would love it. But instead, he did this uh, parlor trick, whatever. He watches One Punch Man. And One Punch Man is a post-modern, like, if you've watched a lot of uh, Dragon Ball Z and Naruto, it's supposed to make fun of those series. It's, it's an anime for anime nerds to laugh at the tropes of say superheroes he's too powerful he beats every opponent in one punch and he and matt walsh films himself falling asleep watching one punch man which is impossible because one punch man kicks ass but you can't <laughs> you can't watch that as your first anime and he was trying to say that he was bored but if he actually watched the movies that i recommended you can't watch spirited away that's why it was a it was my trojan horse no human can watch spirited away and say anime is demonic or bad that movie kicks so much ass. It's so perfect as a movie. It's so legendary. Jinro, amazing. Akira, amazing. Ghost in the Shell, amazing. I, I look at all these arguments that they make, and, and people always talk about the the right can you know wants to talk about policy, and the left to, talks about culture like this. Obviously, now I think that the left is just as uh, dogmatic, and they're even more focused on policy than the right. But what's the point of uh, creating a worth a world worth living in if you can't create things like art? and things to enjoy the world outside of just politics. Like, it's not enough to just criticize. We criticize Star Wars today. Yeah. And all the time we criticize it because it sucks and they're trying to insert their beliefs into their movies, games, whatever. Has It's been a, a Trojan horse for the left for many years. Hollywood was always red. That's a great uh, mm -hmm. razor fist rant that's like 40 minutes talking about how they infiltrated Hollywood, the communists. They know that you can reprogram human minds through the arts. And I'm not saying every story has to have Trojan horse ideas, but the idea is you empathize with the main characters. Through their story, you're able to reprogram your plastic brain. And most of us have plastic brains. And it, it goes past the firewall. When you, when you look at art, it, you're, let's say... I wanted to make you think that uh, you could be a trans person or to empathize with trans people. If I told you this at this table right now, Mary, your firewall would go up. But if I wrote a really good story 
where the you didn't even know the character was trans for a while. Maybe I've tricked you into watching and enjoying that story so that by the end you're going to say, yeah, that was a pretty good story. I still disagree, but now it's been incepted in your brain. You'll watch more culture, um, and that's the point. That's why the investors are spending hundreds of millions of dollars, billions of dollars telling stories featuring their memes. I'm going to implant my memes so you watch the movie, you play the game, and you come out not even realizing you've taken the medicine. There's so much sugar in it, but you've taken the medicine. And now through the years, it's going to get watered. And now you're going to realize you're secretly already kind of agree with the left on many things. The right, I don't know if they're just stupid. I don't think they're stupid. Why not make your own stories where you can put your values, say Lord of the Rings. And if a father is going to a son and say, you know, you should try to be like Aragorn, son. He was so heroic and... And the kid's going to know what be like Aragorn means. He's read the story. He does, the dad doesn't have to say you have to be heroic and list all this stuff. You already like Lord of the Rings. Be like Aragorn. So that's why we tell stories. Humanity tells stories. The Bible is a collection of stories. Whether it happened or not is another discussion, whatever. I'm not even trying to say anything. But the whole point is storytelling around the campfire used to be word of mouth. And then we discovered language. I would argue that pictures even predate the written word. So pictures and comic books were a thing before the written word existed. I, that's why I love comic books so much. Sequential images are superior to language, and that's why young people read comics, and that's why you, the conservatives should make comics, because you can persuade younger people and older people. It's a beautiful art form, comics. Animation, video games, these are all experiential tactile experiences that we should not be dismissing we should be investing in it and that's why it pisses me off so much when a matt walsh or any daily wire or whatever type conservatoid says like oh the arts are so stupid uh you should just i don't even know what their arguments are like just abscond just keep <laughs> running away leave this game of king of the hill alone and let your opponents have carte blanche in the arts it is psychotic to me. It makes me so angry because I've spent my whole life trying to boost comics, games, whatever. I enjoy them. But to hear influential people on the right say, let's just dismiss it as de demonic or stupid. It's for children. You're missing out on so many opportunities and you're not, you don't have the long game in mind. 10 years from now, 20 years from now, all entertainment belongs to your enemies and there are consequences to that. You need to start planting seeds now so that 20 years from now, at least you have skin in the game instead of we're going to just keep running away forever. Yeah. So that's why I'm sorry. I yell Matt Walsh types. They make me crazy. I don't see a lot of artists. There's a meme, a bad meme of the, the right can't make art, something like that. And then I always like raise my hand. Hey, we're here. Mm -hmm. Are you paying attention to us or are you just ignoring us? That was something I said, actually. Uh, I, I, I tweeted the, the right can't, uh, or no, the left can't meme, the right can't art. And I saw you respond exactly that. Just raise my hand. Yes. Uh, I understand there are exceptions, but yes. it, a lot of the time, here's the thing. I think that the ostensibly the right in recent years has finally warmed up to the idea that you're trying to express here that, yeah, culture matters. A lot of these different media, however, haven't exactly gotten as much attention. Specifically, what you're talking about is like comic books, video games, anime, right? They're right. You can see, but not Matt, limited. Matt to. Walsh walk, like works at the Daily Wire, and they're trying to make TV shows and movies, right? They understand that that's important in principle, but I think that what he's saying, specifically because this guy is a middle-aged dad. <laughs> He, he, he gives off the, the most the, dad energy. Out he of doesn't anyone. get the appeal of these things. And maybe he's just wording it in an inflammatory way he's to get a sarcastic. reaction. Yeah, he's, and, he's being deadpan. But he, I get that, you know. If I could force him to watch at least one of those movies, though, he has to agree it's good. I actually agreed to a wager here on the show where they wanted me to watch an anime. And the one they chose is Attack on Titan. I no, watch, I, I would never agree to that. The first, what was it, five episodes or no. something of attack on titan i absolutely hated it no um so i guess i Kiki's in a way delivery service i already watched that did it's, you like it i wouldn't spared it away i wouldn't watch it again spared it away i haven't watched that no you gotta see it but look i mean i'm just okay. saying some people just aren't gonna like the thing that you like i right? love the but, idea that but, matt <laughs> agrees to it and just becomes a weeb by the time it's done and gives up on the daily wire one does not have to love all anime like i will freely admit most manga 
games it's crap a lot of it is crap even <laughs> Hayao Miyazaki has said anime was a mistake <laughs> It's famous for it, but there are gems out there. And the point being, like, if your kids are going to watch it and seek it out anyway, I, as a parent, would want to be involved and at least have some, like, parents can play Minecraft with their kids, whatever. If my kids are playing these games, I want to know what games they're playing. I want to know what the content is so that my kids are not being uh, incepted with, say, leftist ideology. Whatever movies they're watching, I want to know what the movies are. Uh it, you don't have to watch everything, but at least, you know, if you want to participate in the culture war, don't just say we're losing. Say, what can we do to win? I fully believe that, you know, the, the majority of the, the real white guilt that is felt these days has been infiltrated through movies in the way that they're perceived and shown in movies to be absolute buffoons around people that look differently than them in movies for like the last 20 years. I think that that's where a huge portion of it comes from it's not from schools it's not from their parents it's coming from the way that they're perceived when these things happen in movies and i mean i would say it's a mix of all of those things for instance i was i I told you i was watching an episode of third uh, of third watch where carlos goes to meet his girlfriend's like upstate new york nimby parents who are just absolute asshole like they're, they're like they're trying to be nice but unbelievably condescending to a guy who's of a different race than them and that even is, when white people try to be good they're yes evil. Like, that is where it comes message. from that's to your point about trojan horse that's where that comes from right yeah. that's because somebody who has an uh, a manhattanite new york perspective of race relations wrote that into a script and there's 20 30 years of that internalized to the audience so that show was popular amongst boomers because it was for people like my parents it wasn't for me i was a, a kid when i I was just finishing high school in that show, and I wasn't watching procedurals at that time. But you slowly push things farther and farther that way, and that's done through the arts. Well, self-hate among white people is definitely, it's like a fact that this is a thing that's happening. Especially, that's why you get so many socialist uh, people in college. They grew up probably doing very well in life. Their parents provided everything for them. And now their professor's job is to make them feel super guilty and now, don't you want to join the other side? Don't you feel bad for these people who didn't have all your privileges? Join the revolution. Well, it's a it's a secular religion that t- took over the idea of original sin. You have original sin, being born privileged, and we're going to, you can still be a Christian, whatever. You're not going to be a Christian by the time you get out of college, because now we're going to replace that original sin idea with you're originally privileged and now you have to serve and undermine your own privileged whatever your family that's why a lot of them end up hating their family for no reason Mm -hmm. you got the meme of the perfectly normal looking cheerleader type that goes into college comes out with blue hair and piercings and stuff hates your dad for no reason but there is a reason so the idea of the secular religion it's not an accident original sin and your salvation is you have to fight for the other side and the idea of being born again, resurrected, has also connotations to the trans movement as well. You can have a new body. Okay. You can force yourself to have a new body. I am my new self. I am born again in the image of whatever I see in my own mind as what I want to be. Mm-hmm. So it's, as usual, leftist inversion of a well-established Christian belief. Or Many good points ah. were made. And I, I'm glad that we could use this moment to give you the final word in that back and forth. Take chat. that, Walsh. But we are quite over time, and we should <laughs> finish up the Let's super finish the chats. super chats. Shane H. Wilder said, I agree with G Prime on the AI thing. AI isn't art. Oh, there was a $20 one as well from... Um, oh, we missed one I, during missed, the... I, I just wanted to hold off on it during portion. the interview portion, but I think that was... It was from Rhaegar Targaryen. He said, speaking of Stacey Dash, the Patrick Bet David podcast with Damon Dash was fascinating. Definitely not as likable as Stacey. Drink every time he cuts off Patrick. The comment section cracked me up. Of course, he has TDS. Is Damon Dash her cousin? They're related? They're related? Okay. Okay. Um, Thanksgiving must be interesting. Um, but yeah, like we reached out to Stacy Dash. I would have loved to have her on here. Yeah, and I got my hopes up because we got a response at first, but we'll see if we can check it, back. It would have been hilarious because it would have just been me fanboying over Clueless. Me too. It, it would have just it fangirling, just, but yeah, uh, fanboying. That's, that's all it would have been. It would have been like, did you know that Clueless is actually one of the greatest masterpieces of the last 50 years? Yes. It really is. Yeah. It really is. It's it's amazing. Oh, I would love that. 
Prince Elian said, Gen X are here. I remember my grandmother saying to me, I don't care what they tell you in school. Trump is black. <laughs> there you go. I mean, that's kind of like, remember the, do you remember the person who said during the uh, interview for the Cleopatra show? That was that exact, was it from that quote? Yeah. So, yeah, that's what it's from. Yeah. So it's like, I don't care yeah, what they tell you in school. Cleopatra was black. Mm -hmm. Yes. First, last said, most Twix AI complaint from furry prawn artists, though. What? Uh, refer I, I, I don't get it. Oh, um, oh, I think the, that he's saying most of the people on, on Twitter complaining about... <laughs> thank you! Complaining about AI art are <laughs> people who draw furry porn. Would you say that's accurate? They say a lot of technology is driven by that industry. So if AI is becoming, is fast growing, especially with imaging, uh, it's possible that a lot of users are intending to do that. But I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of the AI platforms have blocks in place to prevent. Well, I mean, they, they're saying like, they're, they don't have credibility when they complain about AI encroaching upon artists because uh, they're not creating great art. They're creating like furry deviant art stuff. Basically, which I, I genuinely have seen exactly the type of person One of the complaining worst about it. Stories that I've seen recently, which maybe we could have talked about on here. There's a. Oh, the people on my side. Yeah. There's a YouTuber in a, social, in a social media personality called The Dadvocate. She talks a lot about men's, like, father's rights and stuff like that and discusses stuff between the sexes. She's great. And she's apparently, like, now fighting a lawsuit because there's, like, AI art, like, AI, like, deep fakes that have been made for, like, her supposedly selling sex toys oh. that she was never doing. And That's she's, insane. like, she wrote this long story post that's basically Yikes. like I've been driven close to tears. I I have to file a lawsuit and all this stuff because it's not me. I never did anything like this, but they're using my likeness to sell <clears throat> sex toys. Yeah, I. But that's not what they're for referring to in this super chat. They're saying like most of the people who fancy themselves artists, artists. on Twitter at least, gotcha. um, or Tumblr, are just creating like. It's true that... Furry homestuck yeah. porn or whatever. I a know. lot of people... Well, a lot of artists, period, are leftists. Uh -huh. So a lot of the people that are anti-AI are leftist artists. And it's... So, yeah, there's like kind of a bifurcation that's been created Correct. because of that. So I've yeah. been... A lot of people arguing with me on our, are on our side because I'm an artist who happens to lean right. Mm -hmm. uh, I find myself at a position of like not a lot of people agree with me on our side, which is strange. Yeah. Um, but really what it is, is artists, period, have spent decades honing their craft and they don't want to be replaced by a machine. That's all. A guy with who can write a prompt that can replace your job. And the uh, the public cannot really often tell the difference between a handmade piece and a machine made piece. So it hurts to know that uh, a lot of people are just going to drop out. That's yeah. not that hard to believe, given that like a lot of the people on the right felt very uh, scorned when Learn to Code came out. So anytime they can stick it back at a predominantly mm. leftist yeah. industry and say, yeah. ha, you they should don't, learn yeah. to code. There was like this clip of Tucker Carlson debating Ben Shapiro years ago that went pretty viral because they were talking about AI taking um, truck drivers jobs yeah. and Tucker was basically saying like if we can slow down or prevent this technology from taking the jobs of these blue collar workers we should but mm -hmm. Ben Shapiro was on the side of like no like we need the technology to innovate as fast as possible and because they can help Israel somehow or something <laughs> No, Who's, he didn't Lex, bring up Israel. Lex Friedman loves it. But his <laughs> I mean, argument Lex is we Friedman, need... Lex Friedman's arguments are automatically it, dispelled by the fact that I fall asleep when I it's look. It's interesting because that, didn't, that conversation didn't even talk about entertainment, entertainment and art at the time. But the idea, um, yeah, anyone who, even if uh, b people who made candles before light bulbs were a thing, we're, uh, we're going to lose our jobs. It's, it's sad. We want to preserve our traditional uh, jobs there's a movie called jiro dreams of sushi Have you it's ever interesting heard of this? Yeah. too because i watched it well, i always use this example yeah. i'm sorry okay. there's a sushi guy who like charges 300 dollars a seat at his sushi place and he's like this 96 year old master of sushi mm -hmm. and the idea is that you're so good at what you do that you can charge anything you want but unfortunately a lot of people just want 7-eleven sushi um so the difference for him the jiro types is i'm going to just keep being a master 
but a lot of people are just going to not be sushi makers anymore and it's just going to be this machine made crap um mm -hmm. eat the slop kind of thing i like the slop sushi i do it's it's interesting though because out of the two of them i mean shapiro's actually like he reviews movies and television right so he actually does have an interest in in that side of culture so it would have been interesting to hear i mean maybe he has had yeah. this discussion since then what his thoughts are as relation to like the ethics of ai and art it's really not necessary to have ai in entertainment when there's investors it's like look we there are people who want to do art mm -hmm. traditionally in the old days uh whoever had the money to be a patron could buy a painting say the church be pre-renaissance even um the churches would hire artists and craftspeople to make amazing cathedrals and paintings on walls stained glass and all that beautiful stuff and people now you know we love those churches still and then in the renaissance it was the medicis who it was the rich um i don't remember what their jobs were exactly but they replaced the church as patrons and so you saw a lot of um secular slash mythological paintings which were replaced by uh, in later generations uh, people were able to just hire artists to make decorative paintings for their houses instead of cathedrals or mansions so really it's whoever can pay for the art gets to decide what art the culture consumes and right now that's disney the left Sony. Well, yeah. so <laughs> the right needs to step up and hire artists yeah. that other, has been my argument the other day or just a couple weeks ago there was the whole debate online between the people who were talking about the three like microsecond images of ai art in late night with the devil and did you hear about that controversy refresh me that indie horror film late night with, with the devil uh, with they, david desmalkin they said they used a couple of images that were ai generated in yes. the in the film yes. um that were blink and you miss it basically and i'm sorry i looked at that and all they got a I lot saw, of hate for it i yes. just saw a bunch of whiny like art nerds i'm sorry yeah. like complaining about it because of how uh, first of all the directors were forced to make a statement on it and which apologize I thought was almost ridiculous yeah. a lot they of leftists just, yeah they were forcing them to apologize they should have never addressed it at all it was pointless to address it in any fashion it's gonna happen and uh and i saw the images and all in like and what i saw was like a bunch of people who were like guys like he shows the ai image and then he does his own version he goes like this would have been a chance of a lifetime for me to to draw this he's right yeah it would have been but the tone of the whole debate was just so annoying to me that I can't, I can't bring myself to care. A lot of but people are going to lose jobs, man. Yeah. It's, uh, but it's not just that. I've devoted my whole life to this yeah. profession. It's like martial artist. It's like, oh, uh, everyone's watching robots do MMA now. You don't need to be a martial artist anymore. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, shoot, I just wasted the last 30 years yeah. of my life. But I don't, I don't feel that way anyway about my profession. Even if I didn't get paid, I would still do it because I love it. Yeah. Um, but we would like to have more time to devote to our profession. If I have to work as a janitor, I will. But that means I get less time to draw. And that's sad. Mm -hmm. Quite Blackpilled said, is your guest doing his part for managed democracy? Hmm. I play hell divers uh, sometimes. Um, not often. I actually am a huge Street Fighter Six freak, and I've been playing Dragon's Dogma. Let's see. I'm not gonna play Stellar Blade. Yeah, I I, I own hell divers. There you go. Dubby yeah. Nanners uh, issued a correction. It's Frost, not Frosk. Sorry, from G4. Blade. Frost, yes, of course. I, I yes. was like, Frosk was in He did Blade? say Frost, it, so I just I, said I, it. I didn't, I, say I didn't That's the game's journalist, I think, yeah. Frost. It is yes. from the yeah. G4 TV. Yeah. Chrissy Mayer did if a good Chrissy Frost. Only Chrissy Mayer was here to do her Frost impression. You funny. have a typo, I'm going to assume that it's what you intended. Yep. Quite Blackpilled said, I don't mind pronoun effery as much in fantasy. Humans have two genders, a sentient tornado in a wizard's tower doesn't. Here's my problem with it, though. What I imagine is a progressive writer or a progressive script writer going, ooh, here's a fantastic <laughs> opportunity to dump it into this piece of art. I don't, see, <laughs> I don't see it as organic. I this wonder is. if that actress is like actually identifies as non-binary in real life. Well, here's a perfect example. Look, actors don't like going by actor and actress anyways. They prefer to just go by actor because they find the, the delineation between the two demeaning. So actress, yeah, perfect. Nerdy Film Girl said, are you guys going to see or talk about Civil War? It's divisive, but surprisingly not because of politics, which it apparently shies away from. 
I saw that, and I saw even Nick Offerman in the in an interview when asked about the politics of the movie seemed to sidestep it as well, which I appreciate. I don't really care much about Alex Garland as a, as a filmmaker. I despise A24 and, and most things from there. Hmm. I'm hoping tonight to get tickets to an early showing of the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare from Guy Ritchie, which personally I would find to be more fun. Uh, you you would imagine that everybody working for Timcast would be required to go see a movie called Civil War, but mm-hmm. alas, our boss is not forcing us to do that. But uh, Mary, are you planning to to go see it? Civil War. Yeah. I I mean, I wanted to see it, but now I feel like Bro, no. Yeah. What I should do? I should go. I should just go rewatch Captain America: Civil War and then put up a Civil War review and have it just be a review of Captain America: Civil War from 2016. <laughs> That's pretty funny. That I don't good. know why. Like, why does Hollywood love journalists so much? They love making TV shows and movies about them. Because they're like, bad people. They. They just worship them. Yep, they do because they, you know, what it is that they, they, they are still under this impression of the unbiased, yeah, seeker of truth journalist. Yeah, everyone gets in their way, <laughs> and I'm like, and I'm like, it's like, oh, it's the war, in, it's the foreign war correspondent. I'm like, who works for a gazillion dollar company that is friends with weapons manufacturers? The guy who owns your newspaper is country club buddies and stockholder with the dude who runs Boeing and Northrop. You know what I mean? Yes. Like it's just. I mean, even in that silly Shonda Rhimes show about Anna Delvey. Mm-hmm. It's mainly starring the journalist who broke the story about her, and they show that he ha- she has all of these mean white male bosses who are trying to stop her from covering the truth. And in reality, the journalist came out and did an interview, and she was like, no, my bosses were great. They never stopped me from covering this, and they loved it, and they let me do whatever I want. They love it. They love the idea of fighting against something yeah. to get the story published. It would be more likely Ugh. for the government to stop you or put pressure on the paper to stop you yeah. than it would be from the paper themselves. The mean white male boss. Let's uh, let's um, let's figure out what's going on with FISA before we worry about all that. How about that? Not that John Stewart said, happy Friday, George. I love your work. Oh, thank you. Happy Friday. Shane H. Wilder said, watch the movie Roar. It was a film that was supposed to show how gentle tigers were. It took 11 years to make because actors kept getting mauled. <laughs> See, that's the wow. next... That, not, not to be too on the nose, but that's what the next Tiger King should be. They should turn Tiger King into an anthology series, and it just becomes about the making of that movie next. You mean Lion King? No, ti- you- no. I mean King. Tiger King. Tiger King. Okay. Yeah, remember okay. Tiger King? <laughs> the correct guy. Yeah, the correct guy. He's in well, jail should, still. They should do the, the live action Lion King all over again and do it this way. My uh, my um, 2028 provincial, like my ballot for 2028 is Fetterman Tiger King. <laughs> That's what I want. Serenko <laughs> Productions said Kathleen Kennedy ruined Star Wars by making every new main woman character a carbon copy with K's of herself. Yeah. That's what they said. Uh, Corey Anderson said, Disney made a movie called Song of the South. The fact they think they have a moral high ground is hilarious. Disney sucks. Star Wars is trash. Harry Potter is way better. J.K. Rowling is a bad biatch. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, what we She's need a is bad so, somebody in the chat said a JK a picture of J, of a bikini clad J.K. Rowling with an AR-15 would do numbers online. Like it's a, it's a <laughs> Union Jack bikini too. <laughs> Do it. Um, but song. Of, I thought that people looked into Song of the South because it got canceled, and it, in reality, wasn't even. It was like wholesome and like wasn't even offensive. Uh, like that's why they, they replaced it? the the Splash Mountain yeah. at Disney for the Tiana's and, and, Bayou. And there is no Song thing. of the South on Disney Plus. Yeah, they got rid yeah, of it rid and of it. erased it from our memory. <laughs> Yesh said, hey PCC, it's your boy Yesh. Congrats on making it to episode 589. Had my doubts, but it turns out y'all have a nice little program here. Here's to 600. <laughs> I love the idea that at 589 is when he really starts to turn around. He's like, look, I was skeptical up to like 587. Once you got to 588 and then into 589, I started to think maybe you guys well, are Well, IRL is on all. batting 1,000 mm-hmm. right now, mm-hmm. so we mm-hmm. have to catch up. Mm-hmm. High Vulture 75 said, good guest with a good sense of humor. By the way, Greek yogurt is gross. That is all. Uh, Would you agree? I don't know, man. I'm not offended. Okay. You have bad taste. That's a way, well, that's one that's way a, to that's admit That's a you it. problem. Yeah, it's a you problem. DC and C said, is that how you take your yogurt Greek style? 
Are they provoking me into making an inappropriate yes, joke? they are. Come on, guys. You know I'm better than that. Corey Anderson said, Mary, you know that super chat about Helen Keller was fire. Well, that's... I didn't even see it. I'm sure you're really happy with yourself, but it's not going to get read, dude. Shane H. Wilder said, never forget, OJ was in Towering Inferno with Steve McQueen about people trapped in a skyscraper on fire. I didn't know that. Does that did they remake it with The Rock and turn it into, what was that movie? It was literally called Skyscraper in like 2017. Uh, I love the idea that the guys like, look, we, they made the movie without having a name. They're like, what should we call it? Then they put Demi, Demi Lovato's Skyscraper on the, on yes. the soundtrack. DeBob03 said, 80s TMNT reunion at Dul Dulles Expo Center this weekend. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> Brett, you should go. That's um, not very far. You know, I'm, like I said, I'm a tourist. I'm a Do normie. it. I'm not Do going it. Do to a little turtles, vlog for the channel. To the, to the turtles. Guys, let us know if you want to vlog for, I, uh, if you want Brett to vlog the TMNT reunion. <laughs> That'd be great. You should do yeah. it. Daniel G said, Google Matt Walsh fedora. You can't convince me he's never seen an anime. <laughs> I'm not Googling Matt Walsh fedora. Shane H. Wilder said, not an anime fan, but I will say video games can be great art. Stray is one of the best games I've played in a while. That and the Alex Jones game. Yep. I play liked playing cat. Stray. That was cute. People like it. My wife loves Stardew Valley. That stands fantastic. Said, Mary, tell your guest, tell our guest your take on Attack on Titan. Already did. Also, now that George said it, if the Bible was made into an anime, would it be awesome? It was. Uh, there is a old series from the 80s called Superbook that is hmm. super great. Uh, I actually grew up watching that because my mom would take us to like the uh, Christian bookstore and like buy us old like McGee and me. I don't. No one's heard of this, but like Superbook was a cute anime that was made in Japan, and for some reason I loved the animation in it, and I never knew why. And it turns out it was made in Japan. Hmm. So Superbook, enjoy. You're welcome. I think it's on YouTube. There you go. Veggie Tales is my favorite Christian anime, personally. I love that stuff from the 80s and 90s that, uh, for some reason, it hasn't been bought up by a corporation yet. So some a lot of stuff just ends up on YouTube because there's nobody to copyright claim it. Yeah. Like, uh, I still watch the old, um, they did an X-Files spinoff about the lone gunman that only got 12 episodes because the pilot episode had them stopping a plane from going into the Twin Towers right after 9-11 happened. Like, or they, they filmed it like it came out a month before 9-11 happened. Mm. And then they just never let the show continue after the first 12 episodes. And you can watch all 12 of them on on, on YouTube because it's just like it's not going up anywhere else. Mm. Rhaegar Targaryen said Matt Walsh is saying these things to trigger certain people and doubling down to trigger them more. He's very deadpan humorous. I literally do this to unsuspecting victims at work. I also say stupid things and then pretend I'm making jokes. <laughs> so I would love to talk to him someday, but then I... Uh, Matt Walsh, come on the pod. It's let's never, let's it's never mediate this debate. He doesn't have the guts to talk to me. I just spat. I'm sorry. That's a guy. High Vulture 75 <laughs> said, what's the proper pronunciation of G-Y-R-O? I'll just spell it so we can decide. Oh, you're asking me? G Y R O. Well, well you're in, Greek, so you should be an authority. The on proper this. is it's gyro, but gyro, you know. W what do you say when you're ordering it at a restaurant? What do I say? I say gyro, unless I want to. It depends who I'm talking to. If it's a Greek man, I'll say gyro. I mean, I won't say it with an accent, but I do say gyro. If like you say, say yeah, I mean, it's like when you're talking to somebody who speaks Spanish and then suddenly they talk like these for no reason. <laughs> like Pedro, Pedro Pascal. Pascal. Right. My name is Pedro. You were just talking with a normal American accent. Yeah. Please. <laughs> uh, my favorite is, uh, I love the meme. It's of Stephanie McMahon smiling. And it says, when, she, when, when the white woman says gracias to the waiter at the Mexican <laughs> I, wait, I love that <laughs> meme so much where she's like scrunching her nose. Yeah. She's like... <laughs> I'm so silly. Again, this is where the white hatred comes from. You do understand that, right? This is why you've been taught to hate. But I your, love it. Just be yourself. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> that stands fantastic. Said, what if we just make a shonen anime of Matt Walsh or a spinoff of Johnny the Walrus? Maybe he, then he would like it. I'd be amazed if they. Well, what they should do is every time Matt Walsh gets thrown into a Daily Wire movie, it should be kind of how he was the. He was like the progressive guy in, in Lady Baller. He was great. He should be a weeb in the next Daily Wire movie. Yeah. Whatever it is. Well, he's Judge Judy now. Isn't that he? is true. He is. I don't know what that show is supposed to be. Well, isn't it like Judge Joe Walsh? Because his name is Walsh. So that's, it's real. That's, that wasn't a joke. I saw the trailer. I'm like, this isn't real. 
They're yeah, really... it's a real series. Mm -hmm. that, that's amazing. He's not really a judge, well, but no, it's a real series. Yeah, but... Okay. Corey Anderson said, Brett, watch WKRP. That show is hilarious. I don't know what that is. Um, what does that stand for? I don't know what that is. I don't want to Google it. I don't want to Google it. <laughs> okay. okay. Gordon Shumway <laughs> said, I totally agree. A lot of the talking heads have this arrogance that entertainment is not important and refuse to pivot. They should have pivoted 50 to 60 years ago. Only yeah. recently they see the importance. And just the Better late than never. No, I agree. But like, look, let's let's start by saying, admitting, comics are not just for kids. Games are not just for kids. I'm almost forty. I still play video games. Even cars aren't for kids. Are just for kids. One eight hundred cars. For Everybody kids. can enjoy art. It's cool. It's fine. It's different genres. Wow, Matt Walsh is younger than you. I wouldn't have thought that, but it's like the personality difference makes uh, me think that you're younger. He's more mature than me, I suppose. That's okay. It's well, I'm not saying you're immature. He's, uh, he's, he's by beard look. alone. He's older than than everyone. Huh. First, right. last said film predates Christianity? Question mark. Uh, the I written I word. So. Uh, we got a fifty dollars super chat here from Steve Kralik. Says liberals tend uh, liberals tend lower in consciousness, higher in agreeableness. The artistic ones create culture. Conservatives tend higher in consciousness, lower in agreeableness. That must open thinkers, uh, the open thinkers, the most open thinkers create functioning systems. Society needs both. So I had an interesting discussion with someone about why more conservative art doesn't get made on a larger scale. And what I, what they were telling me is they've worked with both, right? And they said, for some reason, they can always get people like if they're looking for work in, in the movies, right? They're they're a production assistant. The the liberals are gonna they're gonna they're gonna be like, oh, I got a job on this. Do you want to come work on this project? Do you want to come work on this project? And that even getting conservatives to pick up the phone to talk about stuff like this, it just wasn't the same because there's no infrastructure built in those industries yet. So it's like, yeah, like they're more willing to work as a community to get these things made, which is, I think why a lot of why so much of it ends up like trash nowadays. Anyways, like you know how like the female directors will talk now about pay equ uh, equality, pay equity and talking about everyone wants to come to an agreement on these stories. Everyone knows for the most part, a director has to be a bit of a tyrant to get a movie made, but the production processes of a whole requires a community effort. Yeah, I'll give you an example too with like the liberal versus conservative argument. Like I, when I travel, I don't like using maps. Mm -hmm. um, I like to just kind of use the force if that makes sense. I kind of have a map in my mind, but if I wander and find things by accident or waste gas, I don't mind so much because I enjoy the exploration factor. Uh, my wife, on the other hand, is more conservative than me. She hates not using maps. She hates getting lost. But I would argue that part of the leftist, lefty, centerish um, mindset, the openness, I think it was, is I don't mind wandering and exploring and uh, encountering the unexpected, whereas conservatives technically like systems. They like having a plan. Mm -hmm. And neither is wrong, but they both have their place, especially when it comes to a production where you've got a staff of 100 people and everyone has to do their job. You need the artists who are crazy dreamers and you need the uh, systematic thing. Like you guys planned this show, you had topics ahead of time. Whereas I came in blind and I like coming in blind, like jazz improv improvisation. Mm. Um, sure. But you need to also have notes on a sheet to play music, so you need both. Mm. So what I'm saying is let's work together, whereas right now entertainment is left dominated. And I say this as a center right leaning artist, which is kind of a paradox in itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I think the difference now is the the left. Well, no, the artists, the, the crazy wanderers. dreamers, they became politically activated, whereas before it didn't really seem like they cared about politics. And they're, see they're seeking much. them out through these and programs in Hollywood, through these. They also run yeah. the institutions. Yeah. Uh, that's the, so I was thinking about this is like, imagine if 50, 60 years ago, the country was like, look, we can't cover both of them, but let's, let's go for the entertainment or let's go for the colleges. Can we stop one of them from going both ways? What do we have now, banks? No, you don't even have banks. They're like, they pay Hillary Clinton thousands of dollars for, for speaking engagements. What do you have? You have nothing. Memes? You have memes. Memes are art. You agree, right? They are amusing. They can They're be art. art. Well, I have a very strict are definition. Are art? I think of it as uh, information shorthand. 
memes yeah memes are packets of information like dna so um they can be art uh, illustration can be art but not all illustrations are art mm. if that makes sense so not all pepes by definition i would say i i george don't make a lot of art most of the time it's illustrations interesting yeah Carnell said, I would love to see G Prime take Matt Walsh's kid's book, Johnny the Walrus, and turn it into a comic book or manga adaptation. What do you say, George? I own Johnny the Walrus, and I was so offended by it that I made Goofberry Pie. If that answers, that will answer <laughs> it for most, yeah. Nobody will get that. I was the, not pleased with Johnny the Walrus. The Manic Mustache said, Greeks might have brought us democracy, but... Porn brought us keyword search and VHS. <laughs> that may be true, though. Shane H. Wilder said, the only time I tried AI was to try the Pixar one for PCC. It made Brett and Mary fat and Brett a purple-haired chick. This is why I don't use AI. Please post that. We want to see what this is. Mm. I, I'm, I'm curious. Gordon Shumway said, how can you be talking about AI when there is a genocide going on in Gaza? Uh, okay, Mothman's accountant said, I'm an animation student, and this is an odd time for the industry with Disney on shaky ground. Smaller studios are growing rapidly. Mm -hmm. Plus, think about all the bad will Disney and like, especially Marvel <laughs> has with hiring for their CGI, where they're, they're like the only game in town, so they get to monopolize your time and effort, and they ask for 6,000 versions, and they want the new version of the scene right now, and you better get it done, and they got no mm -hmm. bargaining power outside. No. That's Dan Zatastic said, is this considered a hostage party at this point since we're 30 minutes past? Yes. Yeah. 200 well, Watt fun. Studio said, did Mary really just ask what WKRP stood for? I had to OMG. look this up. So it is a television show called WKRP in Cincinnati. Uh, it's an American sitcom television series <laughs> about the misadventures of the staff of a struggling fictional AM radio station in Cincinnati, Ohio. So, like, it, came, it was on from 78 to 82. Oh, looks and cute. we're shocked that I haven't heard of it. You know. Let alone YouTube. Gordon Shumway said they have their own explanations. WKRP in Cincinnati was a show in the oh. 70s about a radio station. Every Thanksgiving, people post a famous scene of them throwing turkeys out of a helicopter to their doom. And Rhaegar Targaryen said WKRP in Cincinnati is a sitcom about the misadventures oh. of the staff of a struggling AM radio station in Cincinnati, Ohio. It's an old show, and I thought it was pretty funny as a kid. Maybe people just go watch Frasier instead. <laughs> Frasier was my shit. Or yeah. Spin City. Shane H. Wilder said, hey, tread lightly with the meme talk. Yeah, he's an artist. Corey Anderson said WKRP was about a radio station first aired in 78. There you go. Uh, and then there's one more down here from DCNC. Do you got that one? Uh, ever visited Melbourne, Australia? Second largest city in Greece outside Athens. Oh, because a lot of Greek people went to Australia, I suppose. They did? Oh. It seems that they migrated there, yeah. Okay. Oh, we got one more from uh, Halls and the Kid. I would love to discuss AI with George as a fellow artist. I don't like it either, but I have some thoughts on the matter. <laughs> well, I've gone on record as saying I won't work with anyone who uses it. I'm very strict about it, but I understand I'm getting old. You guys will replace me someday. Whatever. Just let me have this. <laughs> it's like a guy's got to eat. Let, let me, me be angry. Me be. Just it's fine. Nobody cares. <laughs> All right. Before we go, guys, would you hit the like button on this video? Please. This live stream, please. And subscribe to this channel if you have not done so already, please. And thank you. And George, my friend, thank you so much. Thanks for the invitation. I had a lot of fun. And let everyone know where they can find you. And also shill one more time. If you got well, anything you're working on book coming out. Uh, there's a second edition coming out at some point. I am G Prime 85. I also, uh, well, our children's brand is Polka Dot Shop for any parents out there who want sweet, uh, cute little uh, gifts for your kids or nephews or nieces. And that's has nothing to do with my sarcastic, nasty personality. It's 100% <laughs> sweet. You know what it uh, is? It's kind of like um, the host, like uh, how Bob Saget was like a dirty comic, but then on Full House, Full House, yeah. he's uh, wholesome. Well, I also th I think of it like George Miller made Fury Road and also uh, that Penguin movie, Happy Feet, I think. <laughs> so, yeah. That's funny. All right. And all the links are below. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mary. You can send me validation on Instagram at Mary Archived, or you can send me hate on X that is also Mary Archived and like last call. If you haven't seen my episode on Adam Carolla's podcast, you should go check that out. 
I posted it on my ex if you want to see the post for that. There's also a couple more super chats there. Yes. Steve Kralik said, how can we spend two hours and 40 minutes overtime on a podcast when there's a genocide? And it's going on in Gaza right now. And there, there was one above that from 200 Watt Studios. I don't think we got that one. Um, he said, WKRP is one of the most famous comedies of all time. So famous that I've never heard of it before today. Maybe. But I'm again, I'm, I wasn't born anywhere near 78. So. No. Yeah. <laughs> Shane H. Wilder said, I deleted the ish out of PCC, Pixar. I could not post them in good conscience. I like y'all too much to make y'all fat. I'm already fat. It's fine. Yeah. Um, Dead bot. Exactly. Well, I still, I want to see it. If you make another one, please post it in the Reddit. There's one more here from Halls and the Kid. Thank you. He said, great episode today, guys. Also, hostage party. We are in the middle of a hostage party We have another right one now. from High Voltage 75 saying, in case you missed it, WKRP in Cincinnati wow. was a 70s show about a radio station. Well, Thank you for clearing that up. Now I know that. Guys, if if you would like to follow me, I am on Instagram and Twix at Brett Dasovic on both of those platforms. One more here from Daniel G says, hey guys, what's WKRP? All right. All right. So you got it. I don't uh, know if I know. I think uh, I need another refresher. One more here from Gordon Shumway says, let's go. And uh, we are Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That is noon Pacific, Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, Pandora, and Spotify. If you would prefer to listen rather than watch. And if you want to follow the show on social media, we are on Twix. <laughs> At pop culture underscore show Facebook and not TikTok because we were banned on TikTok at pop culture crisis and on Instagram at pop culture crisis pod. Mary, there's a couple more there. Do you want to read those? 200 Watt Studio said, "Learn history. WKRP is history." Rhaegar Targaryen said, "Brett, tell G Prime about The Wire." Everyone should watch The Wire. If you haven't watched The Wire, you should watch it. It's on my list. There you go. It's it's one of those. It's yeah. like I'm gonna get to it eventually. Yeah. That's, uh, that's how I feel about getting past the first season of The Sopranos. I need to get past the first season I of The Sopranos. I had that same. Yeah, yeah, same. Guys, we will be back with another episode on Monday. We'll see you then. Bye. Bye.